Hello everyone and welcome to Smoking Dragons where we aren't your average dungeon crawlers. Welcome today to a special one shot that we are doing, seeing as how we don't have absolutely everybody uh, for GEO. So we are Bastard. going to have a very fantastic one shot in the jungle. Ooh. And you know, fun and games, stuff like that. Don't don't don't, uh, don't don't start that's my job today, okay? That's my I job. Wanna, I want I wanna do at least one. I wanna do at least one. Oh, uh, I was I was gonna make I was gonna make you regret that with a racist joke, but I'm gonna leave it alone. <laughs> oh my god. Well, as you can see, we do have a new player here with us today, coming all the way from tomorrow. I am the man of tomorrow. <laughs> For him, it's Tuesday. It is. It is Tuesday here. Uh, this is my cousin uh, Schaefer. Say hi to everybody, Schaefer. Sup, y'all. Yay, more white people. <laughs> not wrong. He's not wrong. Not wrong. I can't say anything on it. <laughs> so, uh, why don't, before we start, uh, everybody introduce your, uh, your one-shot characters that you will be playing. Who's going first? Uh, might as well be you. You spoke up first. All right. Exactly. So, my character <laughs> is named Utadek Nagmarine. I am a lizard folk. Um, I'm also a paladin, and um, yeah, I get I get my divinity from nature. From from nature. It's a little a little different a little different from what people usually think about. You know, oaths and gods and stuff. I don't have one. So my god is the protection. My uh, oath is to protect nature. Tree hugger. <laughs> Not bad. You gonna play him vegetarian as well? No, he eats meat. I have a I have a bite attack. I eat meat. Oh, uh, okay. That's one way of doing it, I guess. You could always bite into a stick of celery, but I mean, okay. I mean, I mean, <laughs> let's, let's, let's let's just say I'm an omnivore. I eat I eat both. <laughs> yeah. What 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 if we fight a bunch of plant folk? What are you gonna kill them? You gonna bite them? I could. Might taste delicious. We must protect the trees. The trees are trying to kill us. We must burn all the trees. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I'll go, I'll go next. Um, <clears throat> all right. Nice to meet you. Uh, name's Connor. Uh, I'm a tiefling and uh, a bard. Uh, I've traveled the world. Um, I say worlds because uh, it is quite different in, in different areas of, of the world. Um, but uh, I have... Uh, traveled doing songs dance uh reciting poetry all kinds of different things and getting into trouble because i have a tendency to actually sleep with married men's wives <clears throat> sometimes they're nobles <clears throat> but today i'm going to basically be playing support for uh well a lizard uh, <laughs> also uh you'll notice that instead of uh, uh um Connor specifically doesn't have the traditional uh, red skin and all of that stuff. I mean, he does, but it's it's a lot lighter and a little more uh, orange of a complexion. Uh, he's got the tail, he's got the horns and everything like that, but he's also got some sharp teeth and uh, I guess you could say demon-like eyes. You know, I like to think they're sexy. The ladies seem to like the, uh, like them, especially the priestesses. Just would you, would throw you that one me? out there. I'd fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have I have looked uh, I've looked myself in the mirror multiple times and uh, thought to myself, would I fuck me? Yes, the answer is always yes. Well, my name is Sorian. I am a wizard from over yonder. I come here just to atone for the past sins of myself. I used to be a uh, quite a villain. But I, I don't roll that way anymore. I don't do any, any bad things anymore. I'm just here to try to do right by the world now, atone for my wrongs. I hear, I'm here with a master craft of all different spells and incantations to help everybody out. Anything you can do, I can make it look better. <laughs> Well, I, I look good doing it usually, but I appreciate the assist. Thank you, sir. All 
Alrighty, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, where this one shot is taking place, uh, we have the wonderful world of Arcadia on the continent of Terra. Uh, you guys are summoned to the kingdom of Adalas. And in Adalas, in the great gray rock expanse, uh, it is very cold, very uh, unforgiving climate uh, with the, the constant blizzards. Um, but in the kingdom, they they have pretty high walls to keep most of the most of the uh, excess snow out of the uh, out of the kingdom. Anything that blows over is just higher than the wall. Um, but the reason you are summoned to the kingdom is because you hear of a of an expedition heading out towards the Balor jungle, down down past the Azusa plains, and your goal is to reach the ruins of Balor. There is said to be a very fantastic treasure, unlike anyone's ever seen, uh, lost to time in the ruined city. Of the Balor, of Balor, deep in the Balor jungle. So, you you head to meet a professor who is heading the expedition, and he needs as many able-bodied hands as possible. So you have come to offer your services and hopefully get a nice chunk of change. So, without further ado, let us dive in. <clears throat> in the kingdom of, uh, of Adalas, um, you, you enter the walls and heard from the, uh, different, different sources that you, uh, that you all have, um, found out this information, uh, to head to the professor's house, which is on the, uh, eastern edge of town. Uh, where he is gathering his, um, where he's gathering his, uh, expedition and being, and getting ready to set out. Uh, they should be setting out in a day, which gives you time to prep supplies and, uh, your equipment. And then you would be able to be on your way. So as, uh, each of you finds yourself to the professor's house... Um, you enter this, uh, grand, luxurious house, uh, with trophies hanging on the wall. The guy seems to be, be a bit of a treasure hunter slash monster hunter. He has, uh, trophies for pretty much all kinds of monsters that you can think of or even imagine he's probably got the head on his wall. Now, whether he killed them or not is irrelevant, is what the professor would say, if you asked him. So, at this point, uh, the three of you manage to, coincidentally, uh, meet up at the professor's house at the exact same time, and you are entering in. So as you enter this, uh, this again, the luxurious house, um, you see uh, an older seasoned man... Uh, and he's like, oh, oh, hello, hello, you must be, uh, here for the, um, the expedition, yes. Uh, yeah, fellow... you can say that we're here for the expedition. Oh, nice to meet a fellow academic. Oh, yes, yes, good sir. <laughs> I do, uh, I do study, uh, quite a lot, and I get, I get to go on many wonderful adventures. Uh, it's, it's extremely exciting for this one, too. Uh, the deep and the below jungle and the ruined city of below many, many treasures abound, and oh, you are a lizard. Yes. Uh, not much, uh, not seeing much of you, the, you're uh, all the way on the other side of the continent, in Ashwinabella, the desert. I travel. Uh, I see. Uh, oh, and you're very orange. Yeah. That, that, that would, that would be because, I mean, I don't exactly, hey. you know, I don't stand out at all. No, it's fine. Very astute observation. 
those eyes. Someone could get lost in them forever. Several people have. Do you hunt for for fun or for sport or what? Hunt. But what what exactly are we hunting? Oh oh, tre- treasure hunting is what we are going to be doing. Good oh, oh. Uh, all right. I'm talking about all the heads on the wall. Quick question here: How many of these animals have you actually categorized, and how much knowledge do you have here? Oh oh oh, <laughs> uh, I I pretty much know every everything that is on my walls. Uh, I've studied quite a lot in order to uh, better understand these creatures and treasures that I have found. I'm going to go walk over to one of the uh, the tables and notice a uh, very phallic-looking uh, statue. <laughs> Just, well, I see you've been around. Oh, would you happen to have any knowledge you could share with me, good sir, on these creatures? I'd like to know all I can. Well, uh... It's it's uh, hardly um, hardly pertinent for um, for tomorrow's expedition. We won't be fighting any of these uh, any of these creatures. Uh, we will be... uh, that's irrelevant. I just like to learn as much as I can. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, maybe what say after the expedition we'll have a good uh, good uh, good session <clears throat> of uh, learning. I like to learn myself, but I'm I'm more of a hands-on kind of uh, learning type of person, if you know what I mean. Many, many maidens, a thing or two. I I see. And and, uh, others, among others. Would I know, would I uh, recognize any of these creatures that he has? Uh, Yeah, you would. um, He's got, uh, he's got some, uh, He's got uh, a kobold head. Uh, he's got the head of a bullet. Um, and he's got a uh, head of a dragon. A young dragon, but a dragon nonetheless. Hmm. Among, oh. among many other uh, creatures and monsters, uh, those are just some of the few that you could pick out. Connor's going to kind of uh, look, look at the dragon. It's small if you, if you kind of size it to uh, others. Well, I mean, that one was almost an adult. Uh, it might as well have been one. Very, very tough, tough customer that one. <laughs> right, right. So, so, what, what exactly are we doing? We're just escorting it to this expedition type thing. We, we gonna go uh, hunting and looking for things. Well, I just wanted to gather an expedition party because I mean, it's, it's not a party without a without people. And I mean, I could do it all by myself. Uh, but uh, I, I unfortunately am cursed with the uh, need to have company. Mm. I understand curses quite well. Well, that didn't sound ominous. It's fine. It's... Well, good chap. Um, I, I would offer you. Um, uh, uh, my three finest rooms in the house, uh, aside from my room, of course. Uh, um, you all may sleep here and prep yourselves as necessary for the expedition tomorrow. Uh, we will be having uh, two others joining us, and uh, should be all all um, all good. Good, sir. I don't need to impose. I can simply summon my house, and I'll be good to go for my own room. So, summon, summon your house. Oh, it's not that impressive. I can do the same thing. How does one? I'm, lo- I'm looking at both of them like summon a house. I live in the, just, <laughs> I live in the wild. <laughs> but, well, it's it's a trick. It's an arcane trick. Uh, for one who seems to know the ways of the world, do you seem to? Lack knowledge of the arcane. Oh, magic is just a poppycock. I, I do not, uh, I do not uh, fancy myself with such, uh, such things. Magic is poppycock. That, that, that that's nearly. A... That's literally my entire existence. Hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't exactly go ahead and say that. That's uh, poppycock. There. Um, that's. Um... I, I almost feel like giving a display here. Oh, if you if you wouldn't mind, I I do enjoy the good arcane trick. Uh, oh, uh, my apologies, we haven't even 
properly introduced ourselves. I am Professor Herbert. Nice to meet you, Prof. I'm Connor. Very good to meet you, Connor, good sir. I am Sorion. Sorion, very, very good. Yes, um, and uh, you, lizard man. Utadek. Utadek, ooh, very, very cultural, very light. nice, I like it. Uh, oh, that, that sounds unfortunate, actually. Wait, I'm, I missed the joke. I missed it. Too. <laughs> you, you don't hear what it sounds like? Do you hear what it sounds like? Uta dick? Oh. Oh, no. It sounds like that. Oh, no. Well, I was waiting for him to say his fucking name in character so I could see. Uta that. dick. That's not that. dick. Dick. D E K. Uh, all I'm saying is it's coming through kind of fuzzy. That, that's fine. That's fine. It just it sounds unfortunate. You will die here, wizard. <laughs> hey man, that's not me. That, that's not my wizard saying. That's me saying. <laughs> oh my god. We are all horrible people. Yeah, I, I'm not so sure um, that uh, you should really be uh, uh, down talking logic. I mean, it, it, it gets me out of uh, quite a lot of spots. For example, I'm gonna miss step, uh, I'm gonna misty step across the room. <laughs> oh. No. Oh, good boy. That is a oh, that is one uh, hell of a trick. Oh, I'm go I'm going to start levitating. <clears throat> oh my god. Oh my god. Let me just go ahead and say that I've actually uh, once again I've been around the world. I've I've learned a, a trick or two, or seventeen. And, and while levitating, I've decided to teleport from the top as I levitate to the top of the room. I, I then teleport to the bottom. Oh, well. It looks like you've got at least two magicians on your, your side that, that will definitely uh, help out uh, in types of need. I do, I do say I, I, I am inclined to agree with you, sir. Ooh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at uh, Sorion and I'm going to cast uh, Dispel Magic while he's floating. Counterspell. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seems as we all have uh, a, a, a complete party of magicians. Oof. Hey, this is this is going to be exciting, I, I do say. I don't know about that. I mean, this one looks like he's wearing some armor, so, I mean, he does. I don't think he's a magician. I think he's something else. Well, I tell, I, by the way, by the way, uh, how, how do you say his name again? You to dick? Or what? <laughs> you to dick. You to dick. <laughs> My bad. I, I got it. I, it's, it's, I, 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 can, I, I cast telepathy with you and say, don't try that again, by the way, with the whole dispelling thing. <laughs> Keep playing around, I might. No, I, I'm talking to you, <laughs> man. I know. I can talk back. I, I don't think we should be fighting each other. Um, it, it, we, we actually should just, you know, be friends and, and be done with it. I didn't fight nobody. I didn't hit him with nothing. I understand. I'm just throwing that out there. So then, are we leaving tomorrow? Are we leaving now? Are we leaving in a few hours from we will, now? We, we will be leaving tomorrow, and I, um, I'll have my, uh, my manservant, uh, Sigurd, uh, show you to your rooms. You what is Sigurd? You see this, um, this big, just beefy man, just stoic, uh, stale, pale, like, just, like, mono face, like, I don't, uh, straight face, there we go. I just couldn't think of the word. Um, just straight-faced man, just seems like he's, uh, a little dead inside. Um, you, you covered that with stone, but okay. Yeah. Uh, he just kind of, like, tall man just walks this way, please. How tall is he? Uh, about 6'5". Okay, then yeah, he's he's noticeably taller than Connor. I, I I decided to put Connor at six foot two. Well, you're a tall, muscular slab of hot ass. But um, lead lead on. It just goes in the direction he's uh, he do, do, Hey, do do we notice that this guy's actually human, or is he like something other than human here? He seems human. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check. I see all. I didn't roll a nat twenty. 
my perception. Yeah, I... Makes it a 25. Okay, so 25 from... I rolled 17. Okay. Yeah, I rolled a 12 and I have insight. I don't know if that does anything. Uh, perception. So you just add your perception bonus. Yeah. Uh, insight is to check if somebody is uh, on the level, um, telling the truth, or, or if you actually okay. believe their story. Uh, so... From what you guys can tell, um, he seems human, but there's something about him that's, I don't know, a little bit a little bit funky. Uh, Connor, you get more of an idea of, like, he's not all human. What parts of him are not human? <laughs> <laughs> you have Connor's attention. Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> his erection. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> That's what he really means by attention, by the way. You have my attention. Don't look down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, as far as outer appearance, uh, he seems human. But again, Connor, you know that uh, at least what you can see is human. Uh, your imagination can run wild about the other parts that aren't. My imagination's already running wild. <laughs> I'm already thinking of the possibilities. Uta Dick is running. <laughs> you, now you Uta. said it. You said it. I, know. You said I did it. it on purpose. I did it on purpose. <laughs> I'm gonna use divine sense. Okay. But do I sense anything? Any uh, celestials, fiends, undead? No. No. All right. So he's on the level. So, Sigurd uh, walks you up the up the grand staircase to uh, three rooms on the east wing of the house. And as he gets to each of your doors, you can pick whichever rooms you want. Which one are you staying in? I have my own quarters on the west wing. All right. He just walks into one of the uh, into the first room that uh, is available. Okay. And do the rest of you uh, follow into uh, the other rooms? <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> sure. Very I choose. Good. I'll choose door number three. The professor will acquire you in the morning. Please enjoy your stay. Is there uh, anything unique in any of these rooms that we have chosen? <clears throat> um, no, they just seem like uh, traditional, like, I mean, a, a little bit extravagant, but guest rooms, but it, it pales in comparison to the rest of the house. Okay. Well, in preparation for tomorrow, I do summon my fabulous mansion, which is a wizard's tower, and collect my supplies from there. Fantastic. Which, when you when you su when you summon your magnificent tower, uh, it, it, a door just a, a door just comes down at yeah. the nearest uh, wall. Yeah, the door the door comes down at the wall, and uh, then it essentially transports you to the to an alternate dimension with your tower and all your supplies. Uh, so no need to worry if it breaks the house because it's ethereal. <laughs> so excellent. Um, and Connor, are you doing anything, uh, particular to prepare for the evening or prepare for the next day? Um, what do I, what, I, I forgot what I, I made this character as soon as you announced that, uh, we were going to do a one shot. So I forgot what I actually had. Um, No, I'm just gonna uh, I'm gonna play on my flute uh, for a bit, you know, just kind of like occupy my uh, my mind for the time being until I go to uh, go to sleep. Considering in my head, <clears throat> I wonder if uh, big man would mind if I actually snuck into his room tonight. Best not piss everybody off before we go on this adventure. Perfect, perfect. And uh, Utadek, 
Um, before I do anything, no, I'm going to take a walk. Okay. Um, and as I'm going to actually ask if I can, uh, leave, leave my, uh, my, uh, animal, can I, can I, uh, leave my animal companion out and won't like cause any problems? Uh, what is your animal companion? I have I have fine greater steed. I want to oh. cast. Ah, so you would uh, you would probably walk to the stables. In yeah. Order to <clears throat> I was gonna say somebody in a horse inside a house might do bad things. But that's why I'm, I'm asking if I can summon my 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 uh, steed. The stables. Yeah, that's perfectly all right, good boy. Um, yeah, I would have thought you'd already brought him with you and confused. No. I can summon him. Oh, the, the magic. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, okay. Do you do you want to see? I was, by all means, show me. And so I walk he outside. Looks, he looks intently at you as you uh, as you have your hand up like this, and he's just like <laughs> just like waiting for the trick. Come come outside. <laughs> Of course. It's just, let me just get my coat. It's a bit cold out. He puts on his coat and he walks out along with you to the stables. Um. So I go to go to the stable and then I'm going to summon Greater Steed, which I'm going to summon a uh, Griffin. Your spell can allow you to summon a Griffin. Yep. Find Greater Steed at level four. Yes. <laughs> I get. I can summon a, 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 a griffin, a pegasus, a, a peridon, a dire wolf, a rhinoceros, or a saber tooth tiger. Jesus Christ! That's awesome. All right. Um, you summon a griffin. Jesus. Hmm? Well. And as as you summon it, it just. Great griffin noise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This this is my comp this is my companion. Oh my, my good boy. Oh, that is just that is marvelous. I have not seen a, a, a griffin like this before. Ooh, it would look um, interesting oh. on my wall. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Old habits. <laughs> it's it's you, you can't. Mountain on your wall. Uh, of course, of course, of course. It is, uh, old habits die hard, as they say, old chap. <laughs> what the fuck is this character? <laughs> I thought it was just me, man. I, I do find him amusing. I'm gonna make it a fiend griffin. He's like the smartest dumb adventure I've ever seen. A fiend griffin? Yep, I can make it a celestial, a fae, or a fiend. Jesus Christ! All right. So you now have you, a fiend, said, you have a fiend griffin. You you said level fifteen, son. No, no, I know. I forget. I forget how awesome level fifteen is. Yeah, level fifteen uh, classes start to get stupid broke. Yeah, they do. Like, if if you could see my character sheet and all the shit i can actually do as a bard at level 15 dude dude i literally have access to just about every school right now <laughs> oh i have access to every school plus some warlock spells sorcerer spells clerical spells see that's the great thing about bards they they dip they dip in all the magics yeah <laughs> yep. they dip in everything if you catch my drift I just, <laughs> oh, I, I, if you catch my dick or his dick. <laughs> calm, calm down, eat a dick. <laughs> Is that his name now? That's what Connor's going to call him. That's why I said it. Oh, that sounds unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> bastard. Oh, my God. I knew it was going to happen. That's just great. So, yeah, that's some of the things that... Um, I am going to... Here, let's go to equipment... I'm going to ask him about his trophies. So what is this you would like to know about my his trophies? <clears throat> how, how? How did you kill him? Oh, what was what oh, was the... Uh... Oh, I can't say that I remember 
absolutely every kill I have done. I've done so many. <laughs> just, well, well, what was your most, how you say it, um, challenging one? Oh, that would be um, that would be the the, the dragon that you uh, saw earlier. I mean, if you never fought a dragon before, oh, I do tell you, <laughs> it is a, it is an experience, my good boy. Um, I have a few trophies myself. Ah, uh, do you? Oh, mm -hmm. consider yourself the monster hunter. Uh, survive, surviving. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, uh, your your scales must be having a really tough time in this uh, cold climate. You're mo much more used to the desert. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. It's a little challenging being out, being up in this cold weather. I see, I see. Hmm. Well, not to worry. Uh, we will be in uh, warmer climates uh, come two days from now. But a, a, a challenge I, I will need it because I need to test test the limits of what I can do. Fantastic, fantastic. Well, uh, it is getting a, a bit late. I'm going to go ahead and turn in. Uh, we will meet the rest of the expedition. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow. Okay. Well, good night, good rest, good dreams, yes, all that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this guy. <laughs> I love this guy. This guy is like... I mean, I love guy. him, but I'm just like, like he's like so cheeky. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna turn in for the night. So, I'm gonna make a note. Chris hates cheeky people. Chris hates cheeky people. <laughs> you cheeky bastard. <laughs> More cheeky people. <laughs> you already know I don't. You already know I don't like. I don't like happy stuff. Are you really making a note of that? Yes. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Are you gonna make everybody cheeky now? I might. Everybody's gonna be happy. Everybody's gonna oh, be happy. I'm gonna. Everybody getting a spear to the face. <laughs> if everybody's gonna be happy, I'm gonna be the one that is it. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's see how happy you are with a spear in your eye. Oh, good boy. Oh, old chef. Oh, old chef. He sounds like the kind of guy that would actually take a shot to the chest. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> <Just> bully. <laughs> what? 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 Sound sound like a good old uh, Theodore Roosevelt getting shot and keep on going. That's what I was thinking, actually. <laughs> that may or may not have been my inspiration for the character. <laughs> it is now, Teddy. <laughs> so, it is now. Uh, yeah, Con Connor's actually going to go to sleep for the night. Okay, perfect. As you drift into your slumber, the next day comes, and. You uh, you hear a ring at the uh, at the door. Which door, though? Uh, you wouldn't hear it because you're in your magnificent tower, unless you went out of the tower to uh, sleep in the room. No, I slept in the tower. I figured, so you wouldn't have heard it. Um, well, actually, actually, I still have my telekinetic link with this guy over here. That's true. I, it has a, it has a limited range. All right, I'll allow it. Even through even through the through the the pocket just, dimension, I'll allow it. Yeah, it's just normally, as unlimited. Normally, if it's um, if it's not on the same plane of existence, usually it uh, it cancels out. But whatever, it's a one shot. I don't care. I'll allow it. How do you break? How do you break the ch the link? <laughs> he chooses to end it. You you have to. I'd, I, I had uh, either you'd have to roll the notice that was there, and break it, or I'd have to break it. Well, you talked to me, so I would notice there now. I only talked to you once. You don't know if it's still there. It's true. I'm just, I'm just passively, I'm just passively observing at this point. Mm. Okay. Well, Con right. Connor hears the the ringing and he he uh, um, gets all his stuff prepped and and uh, good to go. And he heads out the room and I guess down the stairs. I'm assuming there were stairs. To where yeah. on the second floor? Yeah. You, right. you guys went up the grand staircase to the east wing. Grabs I'll his come out of my room. Grabs his pack, all that good stuff. I'll come out of the mansion and uh, or the tower and 
get my stuff and he start heading down as well. I'll be going down. Connor, Connor, as soon as uh, um, Sorian actually is uh, in the room, just looks over and different robes. Oh, you cheeky bastard. <laughs> I did change my robes. I did change my robes. You, I would assume you did because you were in your house, your home, and all that shit. <laughs> so it's just like, oh, damn. wearing the same damn pants I was wearing yesterday. But whatever. So, uh, as you as you all head down the stairs, uh, you do see Professor Herbert, um, and then you see Sigurd, Professor Herbert. You see Sigurd there, and then two other gentlemen. Uh, that don't seem to be um they don't seem to be uh combatants uh necessarily they seem to be more explorers so why do you why do you say ne what's up why are you saying necessarily because they just seem a, lo a lot similar to, uh, a lot more similar to Professor Herbert, uh, uh, in the fact that you kind of don't believe that he took down all his kills. Probably okay, now I, I got you. Because uh, you I, say I, combatants. Pretty much figured that one out. The only thing that gives me away that that I might be a little combat savvy is the fact that I carry a rapier with me. <laughs> I'm throwing that little tidbit out there. D dagger, uh, Steph. You got pointy ears and a nice robe. I don't think you're just some bum off the street. I could be. I that's very rich bum. I mean, yeah, that's fine, fair enough. But at the same time, you, know, you kind of have to guess these things, and sometimes my instincts are pretty, pretty decent. Well then, Professor. Who are your friends? Oh, oh, boys, good to see you. <laughs> well, these are the other members of the expedition troop that we are going to be uh, making our way down there. Um, you are obviously already know Sigurd. He just bows his head. Yes, yes, we're, we're familiar with Sigurd. Mm -hmm. and, and this here is is Orwin. Oh, it's very, very... Uh, a resourceful individual. Ah, professor, professor, it's okay. You don't have to... Don't have to sing any praises for me. I'm just ready to go on this expedition. I'm so excited. And and this over here is Dedane. Dedane? That's a name. That's a hell of a name. The name. <laughs> the name. <laughs> Can I... What are these individuals' credentials, professor? May I sit... Uh, they, they are uh, uh, working to become professors. Hey, I would say I'm a professor in my own right. And then the Dane just goes, I like shiny things. I suppose that's good enough for me. I'm going to go. Uh, <laughs> do I see a, a, a bowl of fruit or anything anywhere nearby? Uh, yes, in the, uh, on, the, uh, on the small round table. You do see a uh, bowl of fruit. Uh, we, what, uh, kind of fruit are in it? Hmm? what fruit are in it? Um, apples, some bananas, uh, an orange. So I'll let you know. I'm gonna grab an uh, an apple, kind of rub it on my arm a bit, take a bite, sit down, kick my feet up. May I use insight to determine whether these individuals are on the level when they say they're trying to be professors? Because uh, these guys don't seem the smartest people. <laughs> yes, you can go ahead and roll an insight check. Um, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll take, uh, we'll do, uh, do you want to also, uh, insight check 16. the professor as well? Excellent. Yes. Okay. Uh, 16 and my, uh, my wisdom is, uh, 17. Okay. Um, on your sheet, it should, on your, on your skills portion, uh, it should show you, uh, what you add to the role on your insight. So just look plus seven. Okay, so plus seven. So that's a twenty-three. Um, you can tell the, these these individuals may have been out on a few on quite a few expeditions. They are just as green as 
anybody else would be. You 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 get the you get the feeling that you guys were called here to protect them. I okay. want to try to. I want to look at these guys. I'll, I'll, obviously, I think this will be perception. I'm only looking with my eyes, but I want to size each and every one of them up and down individually to see if there's anything of interest on their person. Okay. Um, give me just a, a general perception check. Ah, well, thankfully, plus 10. So, 16. 16. Um, they, they seem to be well supplied um, by the means of resources, but weaponry... One of them has a gun, but it's it looks very uh, unused. A, a bit, and it seems uh, a bit. Um, what's the word? Uh, glamoured up. Oh To where God. It's, it's more like a, it's more like like almost like would be like a ceremonial looking kind of gun. Like <laughs> it's all for show. Wow. Yeah. Connor's... Yeah, he's just kind of looking at that like... Okay. And that's, uh... That is, uh, Orwin, who has the, uh, the... The antique gun. Antique gun? Like, uh, flintlock one-shot? Kind of like a... It looks, it looks similar to a flintlock, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna ask just a couple of questions to determine the see you know like who these guys are like what their actual background is because with an investigation i have rolled an 18 and my investigation is plus four okay um for the most part you haven't really heard of any of these people the only one that you've uh somewhat heard of is professor herbert and even then um not much else that you've uh that you've really heard about these people Okay. They, they they seem to be uh, feigning importance. Okay. I guess I'm satisfied. Moderately. Well, old chaps, are we ready to get this expedition on the way? <laughs> uh, we will be as soon as we eat something. I mean, this apple is tasty, but... You know. oh, of, of course, of course. Uh, uh, a pre-expedition uh, luncheon. <laughs> Sounds like a, a good... A cigarette. <laughs> luncheon? What time? What, how long do I sleep? Oh, it's an, it is an early luncheon. Uh, I just figured it would take a bit to prepare. Uh, what time is it? What, I have that ability to determine what time it is at all times. Oh, um, oh okay. Mind. Mind. Yeah, like, what time is it? <laughs> <coughs> Uh, it is actually 10.03. Okay. Damn it. You have keen mind. <laughs> that is the worst. I have keen mind. That is the worst <laughs> for a DM because it's like, shit. <laughs> I can't half-ass anything. I can't BS. Oh my god. It's morning. Yeah, but what time in the morning? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just morning. No, no, no. Right? I, I know exactly what time it is. Shit. I can recall everything he too, so bad. <laughs> Good choice on your feet, by the way. Thanks. It was you who gave me the extra feet, so... Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> I, t I, I, I told everybody they get, they get one feet. Um, okay, <clears throat> so Sigurd leaves the room. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, leaves the room, and uh, about, I guess I have to be precise with this, 45 minutes passed, <laughs> um, and then uh, at the at the round table, uh, a magnificent spread of, uh, of meats, cheeses, uh, finger sandwiches, um, not actual fingers. Not right? actual fingers. No, the, the <laughs> you can pick up with your fingers and like little bites, um, and other uh, fancy rich people food is uh, is placed on the table. Are there vegetables and like just pieces of meat? There are uh, there are some vegetables. There's some carrots, uh, celery. 
other. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna drives. take. I'm gonna take a gander at that. <laughs> uh, uh, Connor's gonna fill a plate up with uh, meats, cheeses, um, various different foods and stuff like that. But he's also gonna take like bread rolls and a few things of cheese and put them in, a, in his pack just because for later. Okay. I'll take a couple of the, them finger sandwiches and pack some of those up as well. I'm just taking meat, vegetables, and fruits. Fantastic. So everybody eats their fill and also takes the leftovers, puts them in their packs, and you are about ready to get this expedition underway. Um, as you as you leave the house, um, there are there is a there are two carts that pull up on horses uh, with horses pulling them, um, and uh, they start uh, loading some of the supplies on one of the carts and any other carts the the gentlemen enter and uh it's that mainly is the passenger cart and also uh you get the idea that that's what they're going to haul back some of the treasure <laughs> or the, the whatever whatever they find treasure wise on the way back so okay uh you uh you can choose to sit in one of the carts uh, obviously um Utadek has his uh fiend griffin and it is brought along the side uh, by Sigurd. Here is your steed. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. I'm gonna I'm gonna let him fly ab- fly above. So I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk. I'm gonna, gonna walk on the ground. Oh, okay. Oh, so you summon okay. a steed and you don't even use it. Gotcha. Yeah, that's no, no, smart. I do. I mean, I mean, if we we get attacked from the air, he can see it, and I communicate. Oh yeah, you have a telepathic link with it. Yep. Okay. Well, Connor's gonna I'm... hop into the back of one of the cards, pull this flute out, and start playing it. All right, you begin to play a melody. Roll a performance check. <clears throat> performance. Uh, that's a solid twenty. All right. It is a it is a wonderful melody, and the and. The other, the others seem to enjoy it, and Professor Herbert. Oh, and a musician at that! Oh, oh, you are, you are just full of surprises, good boy. <laughs> uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just sit in the cart. I ain't doing anything <laughs> crazy. Yet. Alrighty, and uh, if you walk along the ground ut deck the carts will leave you behind so i would suggest i'm, I'm, one of I'm gonna walk i'm gonna ride in the right in the car cart the front cart okay so you're riding with the supplies my yeah. guy's uh my guy why he's waiting is using telekinesis just to you know move objects around just like juggling with them okay uh orwin looks over and he's just like that is uh, that's a pretty good trick you're doing there. Yeah, thanks. It's uh, it's magic. Oh uh, yes, I, I I I definitely can see that. Uh, that is uh, that is very very interesting. I wish I could do stuff like that, but uh, uh don't worry, I got uh old uh, faithful right here. I don't know why that turned a little bit <laughs> a bit western. <laughs> <laughs> I got a uh, old faithful right here. Yeah, it'll it'll do me some good. <clears throat> if you say so. I do say so. And he like yes. shoots a wink. And and I believe you. <laughs> as I as I literally <laughs> You are an asshole and I love this. <laughs> That's that it, it says it in my character sheet. My guy my guy hates stupid people. Oh, then yeah, you'd hate me then. I'm very dumb. <laughs> Why do you think you have a, te- a telepathic link with me right now? Hey, you bastard. <laughs> <clears throat> just wait. Don't worry. Just wait. You'll get <clears throat> yours. Well, now we are. Well, going I'm to, cursed. We are going to uh, do the old travel by map. So as you guys leave. Very good, very good. Thank you for the coconuts. Thank you for the coconuts. <laughs> As you uh, head on down the Grey Rock Expanse, it is cold, it is unforgiving, it is very chilly, but thankfully you have a cart, so you are warm. You should, uh, play, you should play the Monty Python theme as, we, <laughs> as we're traveling. 
I would if it wasn't copyrighted. <laughs> I love it. A lot of things we would have done if we, if we don't have copyright strikes against us. <laughs> but uh, as you travel down, I want everybody to roll me a perception check. Perception. Let me pull up that part of my sheet again. Uh, it's a 26. 22. It is a 17. <clears throat> okay. Um, you do notice off in the distance, um, what seems to be, uh, a pack of, um, of gnolls. They're starting to converge on your position. Could be a problem. They're, they're about 250 feet away, uh, but the, uh, the professor and the rest of them don't seem to notice. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell my Griffin to uh, scout scout uh, in front of us to see like where where they're coming like which way they're coming from. Uh, you can you can see. Oh, you, we, uh, we, oh, we where can see. Coming from, yeah. That's why I told you you can see them. Okay, we can see where they come from. Uh, how many knolls are there? Uh, there seems to be about five, maybe six. Hmm. We got company. Yeah, I, I see them. I see them. I see them. Well, I I'm trying to decide if I want to deceive them or if I want to uh, with some kind of craziness or if I want to fight. Them. Well, let me uh, let me know what you uh, what you allowed want to do, and I'll back your play. I want to convince them we're gods. I, I mean, I don't think the gnolls are going to believe that we're gods, but uh, we could try. And that doesn't work? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to roll a... I don't know, would I roll deception or religion for this one? Uh, deception first and then religion second. All right. 17 plus a 3, and then... 13 plus a 4. Okay. So we will we will get to that in just a second as soon as they get closer. Because they're still about 200 feet away. Um, they begin to converge on the cart. You hear the, the barks and the yowling. Like, they, like they're ready to uh, raid. Okay. All right. Um, do I notice... Do, do I notice which, uh, which was the leader? Um... With your previous perception check, you notice that there is one null pack lord, and it's uh, it's got um, like face paint across this way um, in a peculiar design, different than all the other ones. That would be the pack lord. Uh. <clears throat> so as uh. they as they come up, um, how far how far are they away from us now? They are they are now converging on the caravan. Um, I. Want to look at the? Uh, hold, on, hold on, can I do that? Well, before that, because uh, we're we're gonna get to um, Sorion's. Uh, okay. All right. All right. So I'm gonna levitate up, cast a ice storm, and a lightning bolt, and I'm gonna be like, you know, my eyes light up with electricity and shit. I'll be like, I am, you know, like some kind of god or some shit. Go ahead and <laughs> either flee, go ahead either and... flee this. Either... <coughs> Either flee this place or be destroyed. So uh, go ahead and uh, burn your levels for those uh, for those spells that you cast. You got to click the click the uh, levels that you cast them at. Okay. You just click do cast. That? Yeah, just click cast on the spell that you want to cast. All right. So you uh, just so... casted uh, a lightning bolt and uh, and you've uh, with the help of the blizzard, your ice storm. Uh, seems a lot more menacing um and i want you also to roll me an intimidation check including with that so all right um, uh, intimidation that is a 16 plus a a three 
So, <clears throat> so as the gnolls uh, come up, you you levitate above, and you the lightning bolt and the ice storm, and flee this place or be destroyed, for I am a god. And they're just like, <laughs> and they flee. They rolled a fucking one. <laughs> Well, well, you guys beat that encounter. <laughs> oh, smart, smart thinking there. Hey, thanks. I, 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 had, first time that I had a backup idea uh, just in case it didn't work, so glad it did. So did I, but okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> those gnolls would have uh, not done much, but it was very, very uh, fantastic for that. Uh, Brilliant display, good boy. <laughs> Bully. <laughs> it was nothing. <clears throat> so, uh, because I thought we were going to go into combat, yes, we're not. <laughs> <now. laughs> it's okay. All good. Uh, you continue your travel. <laughs> and eventually, uh, it begins to begins to turn to dusk and the caravan uh, turn they turn the carts to where they are parallel to each other and they set up a fire uh, campsite uh, between the two carts uh, so as a way to uh, keep warm oh, I can ca I'll cast bonfire to help out <clears throat> all right so they instant bonfire and they're like, huh, huh, this is going to be a lot easier than I thought <laughs> I'm gonna go hunt for food. Um. Okay, roll a perception check to see if there's anything around you. Remember, you are in a you are in a tundra. Oh. A snow um, hellscape. That would be a seventeen. Yeah, there is nothing around. Nothing. Mm. Yeah, they, like it seems like if there was anything, it'd be closer to um. To some of the hills, but you guys are you guys are far away from the hills or where there, where any animals could make their dens or anything like that. Nothing ventures out here unless it wants to die. No. <laughs> <laughs> then why am I out here? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, as you all are sitting around a campfire, uh, Orwin is just uh, just cleaning his. Uh, his flintlock pistol. R C A M P F I R E. No. Ooh, I want to crash. <laughs> on his flintlock pistol, I want to crash. P. Uh, how do you say this? Predestination. To oh, clean press, it. Press it. Yep. Instantly clean it. Oh well, uh, that is uh, makes my job easier. Huh. Cool. All right. Thank you for that. And then Dedane just kind of like looks around. Good expedition party, Professor. <laughs> oh, That's good observation. Hey, yes, good boy. <laughs> this is, uh, seems to be the best expedition party that I have ever <laughs> put together. But, <laughs> uh, I mean. Yeah? How many expeditions have you put together? Oh, oh, quite a lot, old boy. It was so hard to remember all of them. <laughs> hey. Insight. Insight. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> a 14 plus all the... Uh, plus the 7. <laughs> yeah, he's not put together many. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure <laughs> you are making not, sure this he is on the level. On. All right, I'll say it in response to his response. Okay. <laughs> There's something about you I just don't know. It's hard to get a read on. <laughs> is there anything else anybody uh, would like to do before turning in for the night? Nope, I feel the hunting, so I'm done. <laughs> um, 
Who's keeping watch? That's a good question. I'm not. I'm too busy summoning an I portal against to my like happy little place. Oh, so you I'm gonna turn it. You summon your uh, mansion or your tower? Yeah, I'm gonna summon. Why, I'm gonna summon why, my tower we, again. why can't we just do all sleep in that? I mean, no one asked. If you want to sleep in that, that that my guy would say, "Oh, if you would like to, if you'd like to, uh, you know, adjourn into my tower." By all means. As soon as he summons his his tower door, I'm just gonna look at it. I fucking knew it. Of course, of course. I I I, I wouldn't expect anything less of of a wizard with the knowledge of the arcane. Uh, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to take one of the rooms in there. Sure. There's plenty of space for everyone. Fantastic. The Do you have food there as well? What? Do you have food there as well? But of course. Good. I'm gonna go. Ha- I'm. I'm gonna have a snack. <laughs> and the professor just looks as you all enter through a uh, ethereal door, and he just goes, "By Jove, this is this is unprecedented. This is uh, easiest expedition ever." <laughs> he just walks <laughs> through the door. As does Orwin, Sigurd, and Dedane. Now, uh, I'll enter mm-hmm. your tower. Go ahead and describe your tower for everybody. Wait a minute. Who's gonna watch the? Who's gonna watch the, the caravans? Bring, bring them in. The door should be large enough for them to come in with. Oh, I, I, I don't like if it, they can yeah, fit inside the tower. You should be able to wheel it in. I did say. It- uh-oh. There's a carving staircase that goes up to the top. There's plenty of space in the bottom. You see, notice there are old tomes everywhere, and there's scrolls everywhere. It's pretty unkept, but it's it's pretty prestigious looking, but it looks as if it hasn't been well lived in, in terms of, it's been, looks like it's been well lived in, but it hasn't looked like it's been upkept cleanliness wise in a long time. There's scrolls and dirt, dusty tomes everywhere. However, in the cellar, there is food, so. And wine, so have to help yourself. Uh, Professor Herbert heads down to the cellar, and he's just like, oh, "What kind of wine? Oh dear! Oh, I am going to get uh... <laughs> 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 that pause. <laughs> he's just face, he, it was so good; face. he didn't know what, how drunk he was going to get. <laughs> I'm going to get something." Connor's gonna uh, grab some food and walk into an uh, unoccupied room, but out of his uh, his pouch, he's gonna pull out a piece uh, a copper wire and send a message over to uh, Saruwan, uh, uh, Sora Yuan, whatever the fuck your name is. <laughs> hey, uh, Sora, I'm fairly certain this these three guys that we're working for are full of shit. I use message to message you back, <laughs> and I. I tell you, uh, I agree with you. I am very much, that is why I'm keeping a very close eye on everyone. And I, I by say, after saying that, I use teleport to teleport back to the place we came from. I'm gonna investigate their house while no one's oh. there. Oh, shit. <clears throat> what do this I guy. see? <laughs> so, what do I see? You teleport back this, to- This shit gets interesting. Back to the, the the mansion that is owned by Professor Herbert. And uh, roll me an investigation check. Sure thing. Wizards, man. I love it. 14. Let me see what, what that uh, that shit is again. Uh, oh, man, I pull up spells. All right. Uh, it said investigation. That's plus four, so it's 18. All right. Uh, as you're looking through, um, you notice a lot of the books that he has in his, like, uh, aligning his cabinet, like his, his bookshelves. Uh, you open one, um, and, uh, it just seems to be a cookbook. Um, and then, hold on a sec. Okay. The stream cut out for a second and now it just, it's back now. Okay. Um, so, uh. And then you pick up another book that seems interesting. It's uh, uh, My Life and Many Expeditions uh, by Professor Herbert. 
Uh, you pull that out as you open it. It's a couple pages of uh, notes from one of his expedition, but the rest of the pages are blank. Can I uh, roll a history check to see if I can find anything to? Uh, sure. All right, that's only eight, but my history is plus nine. So what? Uh... 17. <laughs> 17. <laughs> Jesus. So um, you realize in the first few lines of his expedition book, uh, he's actually describing an expedition that uh, you know somebody else went on. Uh, oh, I knew it! <laughs> deep into the Cygnus Mountains that has to do with the discovery of the the Goliath and Orc um, village of Volcard. All right, um, I'm going to take this tome and match it with this other stuff, bring this evidence back for uh, later uh, usage. Okay. Huh. Sounds like an old-fashioned Gildroy Lockhart. And my guy would be like, mm, I knew it. I knew there was something not right about these guys. And I'll and it's, it, considering that I don't find anything else, I'll teleport back. Fantastic. All right, and right there, um, we're going to go ahead and take a quick like five minute break i have to use the restroom <laughs> okay so uh we are we will be right back in Sorry about Put that. Dick. <laughs> you know, nature calls and all that stuff. So, we are now back. Everybody is back in the tower. Um, that was summoned by Sarion. All right. Um, hmm. I'm gonna. Ca I'm gonna use my uh, message to send a message to both these guys. Both of our team, my party members here, to tell them to meet me in my quarters. I have something to share. Which one's his quarters? Connor upstairs. is going to take an educated guess that it's probably upstairs. Upstairs, <laughs> middle door. I messaged that to y'all. <laughs> anyway, uh, I guess if you guys come upstairs, um, I'm going to share to you the information I have found. I have discovered that our intrepid adventurers, as per se, are lying, and I show you my evidence. This you... book correlates this with all this stuff. So they're not who they say they are, or at least they're acting as if they are more seasoned than they are. So I don't know if this is a blatant determining factor that they are villainous in nature, or if they are simply just that inept. Um. Oh what would you guys God. like to do? Well, I think we should uh, definitely confront him uh, in the morn, but uh, no, not right now. I'd, I'd like to give him one more night's uh, sleep before we decide to actually open up the can of I'm going to cut you if you don't tell me the truth. And what do you say... I, can't, I keep forgetting how to say his name, the Lizard Man. <laughs> yeah, tell us what your thoughts are. <laughs> I keep I forgetting mean, how to say it. If they're not who they say they are, they we need to we need to make sure they come clean and they don't stab us in the back. Do you want to wait a night, or do you want to do it now? I'd rather do it now. I, I I hate waiting. I hate waiting on stuff. Coming, especially coming from the wild, like you don't wait on nothing. You just do it or you don't. But, I do too. I, I too also want to do it now. If we, if you do not mind, Tiefling. But uh, human humans are different than beasts. So, all right. Well, elves are different. Say well, that, uh, I've been out. I've been outvoted. So uh, we'll we'll do it your way. We'll do it at your time. All right. Um, I uh, confront that. I can. I tell you know. Send a message to the. Uh, what, what what to the professor to gather his individuals and meet us in the foyer which is you know the bottom yeah. area and uh we proceed to have a talk 
like as I as I come forward and say, all right. So I have information here that dictates that you are neither seasoned nor at all. You're not even adventurers. So please explain to me this exact deception. Would you walk me through your thought process here? Are you are you even seasoned? Have you killed anything? I. What is your purpose behind this expedition? I have many many questions. Uh, but. Uh, uh... Now, I'd like you to be honest, and I cast Zone of Truth on all three of them. Oh. Yeah. Mm. Mm. There we go. There we go. Well, you see, um, <laughs> old chaps, um, the thing is, is that I, I've always wanted to have grand adventures, and I've always wanted to find a wonderful treasure. Uh, and every time I got close or tried, somebody else found it before me, or I got too scared. What do you know about this treasure? I, I do know that nobody has touched it for sure. Um, but uh, if, if we can just get deep into the temple to Arca, um, deep into the temple. do you know what it, the, do you know what the treasure entails at all? <sighs> Unfortunately, no, but I just know it is grand and uh, luxurious, as the legends say. Grand and luxurious, and we're going to be penetrating the shit out of it. I love this. Are all those, all those heads on your wall real that you hunted yourself? No, uh, I, I bought them from the market. Wow, that's probably the most pathetic thing I've heard all day. I know. Well, technically it's night, but okay. <laughs> Zone of truth. <laughs> it's in a 15 foot radius. I'm, I, all I'm saying is my guy's a dick and he would point that out. No, fair enough. <laughs> <clears throat> well, he's not so much a dick as he's just completely immune to the idea of anything other than logic stuff. Oh, he's German. Got gotcha. you. Hey. <laughs> Close enough. We have a real Kato, uh, uh, Caleb Wittergast on our hand. Yes, I, I know it's pathetic, and uh, I, I, I wish I could be strong and burly and, and able to do all these fantastic adventures. It's just this what is about, my first real adventure. What about these other two? Speak up. Yeah, I, I, this pistol's for show. I, 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 I've, never, I, I've, I've never killed anybody. What about the other guy? He just sits there silent. He's just like... Well? I, I have a fear of the dark. I work what about... What about this giant... What about this giant, like, uh... Robot guy here? What, what, what's his deal? Oh, oh you mean Sigurd? Uh, Sigurd? I hate every day working for Professor Herbert. Sometimes I contemplate murdering him at night. Are you... Are you a war force hmm. or something? Uh, no, I am uh, half human, half Goliath. Right. How? Well, you see, when a mommy and a daddy love each other very much, I mean, or when daddy which, is who, at work, I understand like, mating. We don't need to get into this now. Look, I've made well, many stories of this. I think I might have children in this world. I'm not sure. You probably do, and you probably have many of them, which you're a horrible father if you do. I don't know they exist. I can't be blamed for what they do and don't do. Gentlemen, or, gentlemen, you gentlemen. You can't be blamed for the after they were born. There's a very good chance I didn't actually bet any. Gentlemen! Make him kids. If we could get back to the task at hand! I felt like that was too much information. Alright. You're free to go. Get some sleep. In the morning, we press on. But we are leading this expedition now, not you guys. That was perfectly alright. <laughs> I, I look forward to. Getting this treasure. <laughs> I don't 
loud. <laughs> but I just like I don't. With that, my guy simply teleports to his room. He doesn't even bother to walk up. I can't stand this now. <laughs> I drop Zone of Truth and just walk into the room that I've chosen for myself. Man, I, I should have known that. As soon as soon as you scoffed at magic, I should have known it. Very sorry. I just I just I just walk away in shame. This <laughs> guy thought he was a hunter. Nope. Just a really rich guy. <laughs> See, I can tell that because my guy is also wealthy, but you know. <laughs> well, uh, as sleep comes to you, uh, the morning dawns and you all leave the tower and continue your expedition southern. Portal closed. Is it for sure southern? Because I know which way is north. Yes, it is for sure southern. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure now. I know. You were coming from the north. <laughs> I, I just don't trust anybody in this expedition now. You don't even trust the the invisible god that's running this whole thing either. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> no, that's probably who I trust the least, honestly. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. The half elf has good instincts. <laughs> so, as you continue your expedition to the south, um, Pro Professor Herbert mentions that they are, they are going to stop in Tolis. Uh, which is a small town right here before the bridge crossing to go further down into the Azusa Plains uh, in order to reach the uh, the ruins of Belor. Have I ever been here? Uh, to Tolis? Yeah. It is, uh, it is mostly uh, a city of trade that uh, all, uh, all supplies that come in through um, through Andorra make their way down here eventually in order to trade with uh, the more southern uh, southern cities uh, and even uh, the kingdom of Adalas uh, sends uh, merchants over here to trade in order to bring them back supplies okay so it, it's, a, it's a trade city but it's also um, filled with its fair share of crime hmm huh. Well, while we're here, um, I'm going to use my recall ability, like thing, where I know, hey, we're, here's where we can go to hang out, and we'll be safe. Well, oh, I know, it was I know of a certain area we can go to that we won't be uh, haggled by commoners or individuals trying to rob us. Uh, the what you um, what you remember is a tavern in the nicer part of the city, and. You know, you know there. Uh, they, they don't really allow riffraff or any of the any of the sort. Excellent, that'll do fine. So you come to the tavern, uh, which is called um, the Boar's Intestines. Wow, they mm. do serve good drinks here. It came under it came under uh, new ownership recently. Uh, they have just just yet to change the name. But it kind don't of let the name, it kinda don't let the name. It kind of go the city. <laughs> don't let the name fool you. They do serve good alcohol here. And as you enter, you do notice um, it seems to be more posh than you than you're normally accustomed to uh, when it comes to taverns. Uh, very professional appearance, uh, very clean, um, and uh, very attractive bartenders. This is weird. You guys don't hunt your own food. You guys just sit here and drink and just do that all the time. Not all of us live the life of the of the hunter, my friend. I can tell. Professor Herbert goes, well, now this is my kind of establishment. <laughs> Good boy. Uh, you, have, you, have picked <laughs> us a, you have picked us a wonderful, wonderful location. <laughs> and they go and uh, sit at a table and they start ordering drinks. 
Oh man, the halfling went off. I gotta know what he's doing. Any of the tiefling? Sorry. The tiefling. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I, I, uh, somebody was at the door. Anyways, what, uh, <laughs> he double checked. <laughs> what are we doing? We're at the tavern. We're at that tavern. Oh yeah. There's hot bartenders and stuff. What are you doing? Um. I'm gonna look around to see um, what kind of people are here in the tavern. Uh, it's very posh, um, more than you're normally used to when it comes to uh, the tab, like normal taverns you've been to. Um, a lot of uh, dainty, rich folk, mostly. But there is a booth that caught your eye. Um, seems to be two individuals uh, they, they seem a bit rough around the edges but altogether not um, not too um, conspicuous but they are they do seem slightly different than the rest of the people in here okay so mm. everybody else is all super posh but the people I saw seem less posh than that. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ask the bartender uh, anything new in the city, and inquire about these fools as well, if he knows them or of them. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the tiefling like, whatever impulse you get, don't. Why? <laughs> You're just gonna automatically assume I'm gonna run off and do something of ill repute or something. Hmm? Yes. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> that seems different than everyone else and just kinda of sits down uh and sits down at their table. Nice to meet you. Name's Carl. How y'all doing tonight? They both look at you and they go I don't talk to orange people. Well, it's more of a blood orange than, than just flat orange, but the other know. one the other one kinda of just like leans in, he's like Blood orange, then. Right. So, um, you seem like you don't really fit in with this crowd. Just throw it back. Want to know? I'll take that as a compliment. What's going on? What you doing? What's your What's your play? What What are you planning here? Who wants to know? I already told you. My name is Connor. <laughs> well, Connor, the the um the smaller of the two uh humans uh leans forward and he goes piss off. Oh, that's not a way to, to talk to your friends now, is it? The other one uh leans in We're not your friends. I don't know about that. We we could be friends. We could be friends. They both hey, are just I... kind of, they, they you can you can almost actually roll me a perception check. Alright. You know you could try charisma, my friend. You are a bard. He is using it. <laughs> Not twenty. You can tell that they that they are both somewhat having an inner aneurysm at just your persistence and they just want you to leave them alone. I will walk away from this table uh, as soon as I know exactly what it is you're doing here. You don't fit in, like I said. Well, not I mean, it's... if you'd like, I can go and ask the city guard if there's anything shady about you. You know, just go and up and tell them. And I can be very persuasive. Let them know. You know, I saw these men, and I, I, I thought they were a little bit on the um, aggressive side. So. Um, I kind of just took a look, and one of them had a sword, and he seemed like he wanted to just cut people down. The smaller one kind of just like, <clears throat> well, since you're being neighborly, yes. uh, we are stopping here, and we are heading towards the jungle. Why the jungle, exactly? 
my friend here just wants to experience the jungle he's never been. Mm, I don't think you're telling me the truth here. I think I am. I think you should be a little more uh, truthful. Are you casting suggestion? <laughs> no, I would say something along the lines of I suggest you and all that stuff. Um, um, but uh, actually, what I am going to do is I'm going to go into my pouch and I'm gonna pull out a honeycomb and a snake tongue and just kind of put it on my lap. With my left hand, I'm going to put the uh, put place it onto the honeycomb, and my other hand, I'm going to put it onto the smaller guy's shoulder and say, "Now I suggest you tell me the truth here." All right, what's the save? Uh, let me just check real quick. I have to jump back and forth between two different things. Screens. Okay, I'm gonna cast it at second level. Um. Oh, 16. Well, that's an eight. So <laughs> we're just wrecking these guys. As you, as you see his eyes glaze over for just a moment, you know that your spell uh, has activated, and he begins to he begins to speak. Well, we are under orders from our master, Sanix, to go and retrieve the treasure from the hidden city of Belor. See, now that's all I wanted. The other, the other guy just looks and goes, What the fuck? Just and winks he, at him. And then he looks at you and he goes, And just gonna, I, stays quiet. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to smile, I'm going to wink, I'm going to put my stuff away, and stand up and walk away. Pleasure doing this with you both. Now I'm going to go specifically looking for a pretty lady in the tavern. Before right. you do that, or I'm going to whisper. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to message you and ask you if you found anything out. So we can exchange this information. I pull out my copper. Actually, I was already going to pull out my copper wire, put it to my mouth. <clears throat> oh, Sara. It seems that the two gentlemen over there sitting alone that seem to be sticking out like a sore-ass thumb are actually here for the exact same thing we're here for, so they might be a problem. Did they mention anything? That they are working for someone specific. Uh, what was the guy's name? Sanex. Someone named Sanex. I, I don't know. All right. Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to ask the bartender about Sanex. I know. He knows. I have rolled to... Uh, it's a 13, but I'm looking for, for some ladies to work. <laughs> uh, you see a, um, a woman. Uh, the, the pickings in here aren't many, but there is a woman who is with a man. Um, possibly, um, possibly married, possibly not. Don't know until you ask. Is that going to stop Anthony? Is that going to stop Anthony? No. I'm going to let you guys do some more stuff. I'm going to think how I'm going to I'm going to approach this one. Connor's going to kind of think to himself. <laughs> how am I, I going to play this? Okay. So, uh so sorry on you asked the uh you asked the bartender about Sanix? Yes. Oh, you haven't uh you haven't heard about him? He was a uh a very powerful criminal a few adventurers uh, were able to take him captive uh, not too long ago, uh, and he's in the Howling, Howling Fjord prison, uh, but he recently broke out. Uh, mm. uh, since then, we haven't really heard much um, regarding his uh, whereabouts or his plans or anything, but... Um, yeah, he's, known associates? He's still, still at large. Uh, known associates... Um, he usually... Whatever associates he has, after he's done with them, he generally kills them. There are a couple that and, that stay for a while, but uh, I believe one of them's name is Seth. And uh, what about him? Tell me what you know about him. Uh, Seth? Yes. Uh, not much. Usually his uh, his associates get in and get out. Uh, the Sanix is more is is seen more than they are. 
So there's no location to where I could find anybody. Not at this moment. We don't really know. Hmm. I'm going to take a note of whatever, whatever. Uh, no reason. Just curious, curious individual. I'm going to take notes of any, uh, any kind of uniform that these guys are wearing uh, to note if I can find any more of the, identify any of these guys in the future. Is there anything I notice? Um, they don't seem to be, uh, uniformed, uh, and from what you know in your history, you know Sanix doesn't really employ uh, people in like in like to an army. You just know him to be sort of just a tyrannical, crazy, crazy person. Uh, essentially, just he, it's essentially like he he enthralls them. Okay, can I jot down what these guys all look like? Like Sanex, the Sauron, and a couple other guys. Their descriptions. Uh, well, uh, everybody knows what Sanex pretty much looks like. Uh, it was ext- extremely uh, big news throughout the entire continent when he was actually captured. It was very, uh, very intense when that happened. Um, the adventurers fought really hard and were able to subdue him even uh, when he had activated his rage, which generally when he does that, uh, nobody survives. Um, but you know that he has uh, slicked back uh, black hair, uh, red eyes, and um, he's uh, he's about six foot three, uh, extremely buff human being. Okay. Uh, of his of his known associates, again they don't stick around long enough usually to get descriptors because he usually when he's done with them he ends them. All right, I'm going to go to our guys and uh, our, like our non uh, player individuals, and I'm going to ask them a couple questions about Sanix, see what they know. See their reactions. Um. So I, I finally figured out what I'm going to do. Okay. <laughs> do your thing. Uh, I I forgot to mention that Connor actually has um, uh, black hair that it, you know it's it's fairly long. It comes down to about his chin. He's going to actually brush it all back to kind of look mm-hmm. like you know he's well kept and everything like that. Then he's going to sit at a table, a vacant table. Um. Across the way, as a waitress is walking by, I'm gonna try to uh, take a just a random drink off of her tray. That's a 19. Uh, so slide a hand. It's easy enough done. Yeah. <clears throat> um. Then I'm just gonna kind of like stare and smile at the la- at the, uh, the the young lady. She looks over. Um. And she kind of like like cracks a smile and like looks away back to the the gentleman that she's sitting with i'm gonna kind of hold that smile until it it entices her to come and talk to me um the gentleman looks over and he notices that you're staring at her and shoot over at him too huh i'm gonna shoot a look over at him too (laughs) (laughs) like like a like a look? Yes, I'm shooting a look at the both of them. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh, well, he he doesn't care. Okay. This team playing rides both sides of the fence. Right. right. You got a hole. He's gonna fill it. Um, he looks over and he at first is like like a little uncomfortable, like a break, like. A bit, like, <laughs> <He's> like, oh. <laughs> like uh, <laughs> and he looks back to the to the to the lady. Do you want to you want to get out of here? <laughs> He's just like you can like hear like small conversation. She's like, no, I'm not. I haven't finished my drink yet. I don't want to. I don't want to leave yet. I, I like this tavern. You know I do. We and we hardly ever go out. And, it's just like, and you just like hear like little conversation between them. As another waitress walks by with an uh, empty tray, he just stops her and says, "Excuse me, beautiful." Uh, what yes. else? 
<laughs> Whatever they're drinking, I'd like to buy them another round. Oh, um, of course. Uh, I will be right back. That'll be, uh, two gold, which is no problem. Yeah, toss two gold. Um, and she leaves, comes back with her drinks, and you hear, uh, you hear her say, compliments of the gentleman right here. And they both look and they raise their glasses to you. Thank you. He raises his drink, gives, uh, gives the lady a wink, though, specifically. Still giving them both that. that, that you know, you notice she kind of like, like, like has like a small shudder of a uh, of excitement. <laughs> you you you've done you've done this game plenty of times. It's easy to pick up on on simple uh, body language. Yeah, and he's after he sees that shudder, he's gonna pretend he didn't notice it and just kind of go to his own drink, waiting for her to approach. Um, she gets up and he goes, wait, where are you, where are you going? I'll be, I'll be back. And she goes and sits at your table. Thank you for the drink. You're welcome. Um, I noticed that you were, uh, you don't seem to be having that far of a time. Oh, um, I mean, my husband is, uh, he, he lost a bit of that romantic touch, and we're just trying to figure it out again. Uh, well, you know, I'm quite good at these type of things. I could help the two of you out. If you'd like. Oh, um, that won't that won't be necessary. Um, I mean, you notice she kind of is like she's kind of like sizing you up, and then looks down towards your crotch several times. <laughs> kind of Roll for Link! Kind of getting the hint of what you mean. Roll a d12. <laughs> if, if you're worried about what's your husband, like, uh, I can be very persuasive. I mean, I don't, I don't know. He, he comes over, uh, you seem to be bothering my wife. Uh, Not bothering anybody. I simply bought you to a drink, shot you a smile, and here you are. I mean, this is... Uh, I, I I, ain't a fool. I, I know you're trying to make a pass at my wife. And... Oh, so, uh, I'm not trying to make a pass at your wife. But I am willing to help you with there's anything that you actually might have trouble I mean she, he looks at his wife what did you tell him two of you seem to be having a very trouble time at this tavern you're having a few drinks but you're not really talking maybe you had a snack earlier whatever the case is we've seen it all we've done it all we just don't seem to really pop anymore what you're probably thinking. Well, here's your opportunity to experience something you've never experienced before. Something that you'll never forget. He's going for the booty hole. You can take it. <laughs> or you can go back to your droll, boring, everyday life. Oh, sure, you have money. Sure, you might have security. And the love of a lovely woman. Can you tell me you're fulfilled? Can you look me in the eyes with certainty and let me know that you've experienced everything you could and have no regrets? Roll a persuasion check with advantage. Hey, uh, <laughs> you can't. Hey, hey, oh, that's uh, a twenty-seven. Even when, even if it was a, like a roll of anything but one, I'm convinced. <laughs> Uh, the woman stands up and yells to the the tavern owner, "Room for three. <laughs> <laughs> and you head upstairs and you have a fantastic time opening their world. Did I did, did I see this whole thing? 
We walk I, by I, you I think and I look. How much of this did I observe <coughs> on my way out of the tavern? Because that is that is impressive. You, with, with your keen mind, it's not it's not too difficult to to uh, notice this. I, I'm, I'm going to send him a message of high five. <laughs> <laughs> As we walk by, I'm going to look the, at uh, at my lizard folk compatriot and just be like, don't get up. <laughs> Keep walking. Got to admit, he's good. <laughs> Don't like it. He's good though. I'm banging a married couple. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, on you were uh, going to talk to Professor Herbert and the yes, and the crew. First thing I want to <laughs> do is I want to see if anybody matches any descriptions that I've heard of. Um, from what you can tell um, of the two gentlemen that are sitting off to the side one of them no 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 I'm talking about our guys I know those guys are... I'm talking about our 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 NPC members oh if they if they've been uh, associated with Sanex yes oh um, easy enough uh, no they have not including Mr. Big including uh, Sigurd yes Okay. I know the other individual <laughs> with him. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, they, uh, uh, Professor Herbert, <laughs> Sanix is a terrible, terrible man. <laughs> oh, I would not see myself with that, uh, riff raff. <laughs> Quite unsavory, might I say. <laughs> Mm. I agree. Sounds like a rather droll individual. So, after some time has passed, you, uh, uh, the professor and crew pick up some more supplies, and you begin your journey southward once again. Well, well, well we got a message to our, our buddy here. We got to oh. figure out where he's... We got to figure out if he's finished. I'm assuming that it's been a few hours. He he definitely still has enough stamina to keep going, but you know he's probably going to cut it. I'll, short. I'll shoot you a message saying, "Hey, we're on our way out." Be right there. Wrap it up. So after you know giving them a hell of a night, I collect my things, rejoin the group, but I leave a single rope at the table they were sitting at earlier. Oh, you sly son of a bitch. You slick motherfucker. <laughs> and I informed the staff, do not touch the rose. But let the two people that were there earlier know that the rose is there for them. They easily done. They they acquiesce to your request. Fantastic. So, now, as you leave Tolis, uh, you come to the river right here that runs along it and cross the bridge passing by the nightstone mountain camp where the mountain is the camp is on top of the mountain but you pass by it going down and you get close to sylvanus uh but you are between sylvanus and the Belord jungle Lord. <clears throat> is anybody following us uh i need everybody roll perception check uh, now you want to fight somebody. Oh. Uh, uh, 21. 40. Did you say 40? 14. Oh. I, I thought, was about to I say, said, holy I you said shit. 40 as well. No. But... <laughs> I was like, holy shit. But you can perceive uh, will... everything. <laughs> Let me get a couple of that, <laughs> with, with my perception check, I have a 21. Okay. Um. You don't notice anybody following you, um, and the way seems clear to the jungle. Do I notice anybody, like, any evidence of somebody having traveled our direction to? Uh, you did notice, um, a bit of, uh, a bit of well-worn, uh, uh, pathway, but that leads more towards Sylvanus. Um, but there is a bit of a little bit more fresh tracks heading towards the jungle. I'm gonna ask the hunter what kind of tracks there. 
Uh, Professor Herbert? No, our actual hunter. Oh. Our paladin. The oh. guy who actually has has done hunting. Um, that would be an investigation check from you, uh, Utadek. <laughs> uh, Sixteen. So, as you investigate it, it seems to be um, just some uh, boot tracks um, and then goes on for a bit and then it seems to be uh, um, animal tracks. Hmm. That's odd. What, what kind it? of animal what kind of animal tracks? It seems like a like maybe a wolf, but it's a little bigger than a wolf. Not as big as a dire wolf, but bigger than a wolf. Does it look like these these um, wolves took on this whatever people tracks? Like they well, killed they, whoever was there. Well, are they going the same? Are they going the same direction? They are there going go. the same direction. So, the, so the boot tracks are going forward, and the and the paw prints are going the same way the boot tracks are going. The boot tracks. So it goes boot tracks, and then no more boot tracks, and then wolf tracks. Hmm. Do the boot tracks just stop? Yes. And then there's wolf tracks. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Does it look um, like there's any evidence of an attack? Um. Perception. Fifteen with a plus seven. No, it doesn't seem to be evidence of an attack. Hmm, could be werewolves. Or a druid. That's true too. Yeah, most likely it's a druid. Can I roll for that? Do I have to roll for that to see if I can tell like, if I know like about a dru druid in there? You that's essentially speculation mm. to where like you, you can make good points for either it being werewolves or it being a druid it's essentially but speculation it, it, is arcana able to detect magic uh, if you have detect magic you can detect magic I have detect magic where is it at do 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 did it, did it, uh, wait, that's fourth level. Third level. Detect magic. All right, you cast detect magic, mm -hmm. and as you do, um, it almost like it almost like is kind of like um, jarring how much magic is centered around here. You can't no. you can't necessarily tell what the magic is or anything like that because there is an abundance of magic around here before the entrance to the jungle um it seems like like a very powerful caster what school is it from there's so much abundance you can't tell uh, it seems like a mixture of every school uh, do I see him like wigging out or something as as he's detecting fuckloads of magic? Yeah, you do. Yeah. Question: Do do I also de detect the uh, telepathic link I have with the uh, wizard? Yes. Hmm. You, nice. You, you can tell, but also because it's like it's the only thing that's kind of like soothing your headache a bit because it's more concentrated. You can you can hone in on that. Hmm. Want to beat me a wizard later? <laughs> Wait, me or the actual wizard? The actual wizard. All right. Why do you want to beat our wizard? Try to pack the link to my head, and I don't like that without without my knowledge. Oh right, yeah, it's a tick move to just you know make that kind of a link. But is he reading your mind? Are you reading? I don't know. Mind? He might have read my mind. Are you reading his mind? Just images, really. Well, that's just invasion of privacy. You need to stop that right now. That's rude. Even I don't go that far. Come on. But um, I I, I explain I explain to them that like there's abundance of magic right now in in this forest. Uh, like, because I was re because I was reading his mind while that happened. That's another way you could tell us. <laughs> I was starting to wake out with that like all that shit. I was like, wow, that's a lot of magic. Wow. Well, <laughs> <Both are right. laughs> I was like this. 
I don't know what kind of drugs you're taking, but you should have shared. I just feel left out. Drop the link, please. I, I, I'll drop the link. <laughs> I actually probably, I probably dropped the link just because of the, the abundance. <laughs> <of that. laughs> you dropped right, drop the link that. just for your own sanity. <laughs> it's kind of like uh, oh, yeah. sticking your head out of a window that's going like 80 miles an hour down the fucking freeway. You're just, there's a whole lot of wind coming in. <laughs> yeah, like I said. Oh, man. Oh. Whew. I feel like I took too much caffeine. Whew. Does any, any, so nothing stands out? Nope. Uh, okay. I'm going to use, uh,. Detect. Oh. Before, before you cast anything, what exactly are we trying to do here? We're, we're tracking these these tracks here. As far are, they going the way we, are they going the way we were headed, or are they going another way? Uh, they are going into the jungle. Are we headed that same way, or are we headed uh, a different way to the jungle? Uh, that is a similar pathway that you could take. One of the many pathways you could take towards. Uh, the hidden city of Belor. According, well, according to the map uh, made out by Professor Herbert. I suppose we should prepare for fun and games then. Oh, fun and games! Oh, good boys! Oh, that sounds wonderful! <laughs> it's not going to sound that much wonderful when you understand what fun and games actually stands for. Let's I move. Thought, I thought fun and games stood for fun and games, good boy. <laughs> Have you ever fought anything? <laughs> Why, of course not. <laughs> you already knew that. <laughs> Stay in the cart. Let's, uh -huh. let's track on. Um, if you wouldn't mind a uh, uh, big scaly. I'm going to buff myself with mage armor as we head into this jungle. I'm taking point. All right, so marching order is uh, is Utadek. Um, who's next? Um, uh, since I'm just I'll, forward, I'll take the, the back. Okay. I'll take the middle, I suppose. I was going to take behind him, but I, I got I got the middle. All right. how, about we do, how about we do a V formation? But who's at the who's at the V? You're at the V? I was you, do you, two, you two are diagonal from me. All right, we'll do a wedge then. Yeah, fine. Wedge, we'll, we'll do that. We'll do that. Wedge, wedge is, it, it's called wedge. We can do that. I believe him. He's in the military. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, like I said, I'll take one of the points. I'll be slightly closer to you, and he'll be slightly farther back on the other point. All righty. As you uh, enter the jungle, the, uh, the denseness of the trees and foliage um, just masks... Uh, a lot of your <laughs> <laughs> yeah we, we can go with that <laughs> yeah masks your, um, your visibility deeper in uh, you have to kind of clear the, the foliage out of the way in order to move forward what about overhead overhead the, the, no sun gets through mm. oh, I'm going to dismiss my griffin that's too easy. I'm gonna do some light here. All right. So now uh, you're a bit more bright, but again, still having to clear the foliage out of the way in order to get move forward. Um, the carts are having a tough time getting through, but they're managing. What's on the carts? Uh, supplies, and then the other one's the passenger cart that's gonna haul the treasure back. Mm, okay. Uh, you, you, if you uh, if you're paying attention to the uh, to the professor, he's just uh, in awe of the entire jungle. He's just like, oh, this jungle is just wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> Keep your eyes and ears peeled. There's dangerous stuff in jungles usually. Oh, I'm excited, good boy. <laughs> you can be excited all you want, but that excitement will stop as soon as you get bit by something poisonous. Poisonous. Oh yes, there's there's all types of deadly creatures in in the jungles. There's uh, various snakes. Not every jungle snake is gonna actually have a, a venom or a toxin that actually kills you. 
Sometimes they're venomless, but other times they have necrotic venom. Do you know what necrotic venom does? Uh, it's probably not a good thing, good boy. Um, no. He looks back to the others. Look alive, lads. <laughs> Adventure is afoot. <laughs> God, I hate to see you back there. <laughs> I love him, but I hate him at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 I kind of want to see how he dies, but at the same time, <laughs> I, it's not when it happens. <laughs> like, oh damn, he was kind of fun. <laughs> that's kind exactly. Of. That's exactly my opinion on it. I'm just, I'm waiting for this guy to die. <laughs> Wait for all three of them to die. <laughs> all right. Um. Is there any? Is there, do our carts take any damage? Uh, no. It's just, it, the the foliage isn't uh rough or sharp. It's like a, a lot of leaves and just, like and just like just smooth plants. It's uh it essentially think of the jungle as like a rainforest. Yeah. Uh, so a lot, a lot of, of for overgrown foliage. Things. Uh, twenty six on perception. Uh, so far everything seems, uh, seems quiet, um, based off the wanna... map that Professor Herbert made, it's only about a, a, an hour or two trek into the jungle to where you can find the hidden city. Um, can I do a check about, like, the, foil the foliage? The foliage? <laughs> yeah, and all, like, the stuff around us? Sure. Uh, I'll give you advantage on that, since, uh... What is it? Is it, is it nature... Yeah, nature. Nineteen. Yeah, you know this foliage is um is not harmful or anything like that. It's just uh, vibrant and, and just in abundance. So it 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 doesn't do any harm except with your visibility. It just it's just annoying to have to clear it out of the way in order to move forward. Um, but with um with Connor keeping watch uh he would be the first to know if uh, somebody was going to attempt a sneak attack. As, as we are continuing our track through the jungle, hey. the car kind of starts singing a little tune. Hey, um, I rolled a 13 plus a uh, not plus 9 with uh, history to determine any history about this jungle. Um, you know that this jungle um, was... It, it started really as a as just a small forest um and with uh with the city of balor back when it was um inhabited uh it was a very uh prominent city uh, until it was um about 300 years ago it was attacked by sanix uh and he cast a... wait, wait wait this guy's that old nice uh, he had he with along with um, with his divine power um, that he acquired uh, destroyed the city and brought a torrential rain down for hundreds of years and it grew the, and it essentially formed this jungle around. I'm gonna the share what I'm gonna share what I learned about the Sanix guy here. It's like, I know he's now all of a sudden not just some kind of random dude. He's a 300-year-old kind of weird guy here. This is a little more information that we need. So, yeah, Sanix isn't, uh... Sanix isn't exactly, like, human, is he? Uh, who are you, uh, who are you referring to? Oh, I just yeah, kind of say uh, that out loud. Okay. And I, I kind of share that with my two party members here. I'm more referring to them than I am our other guys. I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about. I'm just kidding. Apparently, he's 300 years old. Well, that definitely doesn't sound human. That kind of sounds more elvish. Hmm. Perhaps. But he doesn't. He doesn't fit the description of an elf. What's the description of him? I forget what his guy what it uh, is, but I'll slick, relate. Sl you would you would know because of your keen mind. Um, slick black hair, um, huge beefy red eyes, um, human being. He looks yeah, he, he looks it, like a human being. Yeah, he's definitely not an elf. Mm. Well, being one myself, um, I can tell you that uh, those are descriptors that might be closer attuned to a, a tiefling, but uh, one. 
who is uh, infernally lucky as hell because all of his um, tiefling giveaway stuff would be mostly internal except for the eyes. However, I'm just going to go ahead and say that um, well, this is probably a fiend we're dealing with. Most likely a demon. Or, or a vampire. Oh, I doubt it's a vampire. If it was a vampire, I, I, I'm pretty sure some, there would be some sort of story telling us that he, he you know, drank people's fucking blood. Yeah, you have <laughs> any stories like that? There's a lot of stories about this guy. Well, spill it. I love a good story. Apparently, he's a 300-year-old Nazi guy who went around killing all these people and butchering all sorts, forming some kind of crazed criminal empire cult thing, okay. which could either be a demon or a vampire. Question, what's a Nazi? <laughs> <Ten points. laughs> well, my guys, my guys, you said my guys like German, right? <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> Man, I could go into detail about what it is, but uh, it's a shameful part of my past. I, I don't want to. <laughs> What's a Nazi? Oh, um, me. <laughs> <laughs> What's a Nazi? Scheiße. Um, and... <laughs> you see. Sometimes I forget that other people haven't traveled as many dimensions as I have. <laughs> oh, I, I... Let's just say he... <laughs> I mean, let's just crazy. say, yeah. let's just say that they're uh, they're a crazed group, right? <laughs> well, um, I, I suppose uh, enjoy your dimension hopping. I myself uh, don't like to realm hop, seeing as how at some point or another I'm gonna have to eventually, I don't know, accidentally step into one of the nine hells, and I am not ready to uh, come face to face. With the uh, with my ancestors, that's, that's not exactly something I. No, uh, I I don't. I want to avoid Asmodeus as much as I possibly can. I have come face to face with the several several hell demons myself, and I'd rather not get into too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna continue keeping an eye out. That's. <laughs> and you uh, you said you were singing your tune. Go ahead and sing us a tune. Um, well, I was just having a conversation, so I'm not actually, like... Oh, I mean, to... I, I, before the conversation, I mean, we'll say after the conversation. I'm interested to hear your tune. Ms. Oh, Lamar. well, uh, here's the thing. I haven't prepared either of them to fully be, um, just, you know, <laughs> so covered. But, let's try, let's try one of them. <clears throat> so, as we're walking by, he's just gonna kind of, like, to himself, but then start to get gradually a little louder. Beware, beware. Be and we are back. Yeah, now I've, I've got it officially back up. Okay. What point did it cut out? Uh, right as you started singing the tune, Beware, Beware, the Emerald Sea. Yeah, I had I changed it because the song is actually Beware, the Daughter of the Sea. The song is Daughter of the Sea for me. Yes. All right. So as you guys continue, um, continue into uh, into the jungle. Um, um, can I make a survival check to see if like there's any like tracks for any like uh, animals and stuff? Um. Sure. Uh, 20. A lot of, like, mud sloshing around. Uh, it's hard to pick up any, uh, any permanent tracks, but you know that there are a few, um, animals that have passed by here. Nothing really dangerous, just, uh, just some, uh... Small game and stuff like that? Yeah, small game. Would a, would a nature check be good here? I'm going to try that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 
should definitely do a nature check here. All right, so it's a 10 plus 4. 14. All right, 14. Um, most of the, uh, the foliage around, um, you could uh, gather some and, uh, and nibble on it for nourishment uh, because of the, uh, the massive uh, amounts of, uh, of rain that uh, graces this jungle makes the, uh, the foliage very nutritional uh, from the soil, so... So yeah, you could. Yo, Con could have Yo, Con, are you hungry? What What are you trying to feed me? There's food around here if you need it. I'm I'm not really famished at the moment, so I'm fine. If you're lost. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna pick some of it real quick, and uh, use my pre station to flavor it, so it doesn't taste like shit. Yeah, so it doesn't taste like shit. All right, um, you give it a very nice flavor, and it is very satisfying. Excellent. <laughs> You're lost. Right, because, you know, I can't press the station this as well and do the exact same thing. No, I'm fine. I'm not going to eat strange food off of nothing. I, I, well, from, from, I don't know where it's been, so I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not trusting it. Why you clean it with magic? It, it, it's 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 been in the forest. <laughs> yeah, I understand it's been in the forest. Look, I have licked a lot of things in my day, and I I'm not going to risk killing myself hey, hey, by hey, eating hey, some I, random fruit in the in the forests. I just cleaned it, all that stuff with magic. It's all good. It's that's not how that works. But okay, I'm good. I didn't die. You only live once, I guess, or twice if you're in my case. <laughs> Yeah, you do live longer than our kind. Hey, no, we actually have roughly the life, same life. No, no. It has nothing to do with that. You longer than me, me longer than them. Gotcha. So, uh, as you travel through the jungle, you eventually happen upon the hidden city of Valor. Of everything that um, Professor Herbert has done, uh, at least his map was correct. <laughs> All right, well. Well, I'm gonna roll a 14, and then plus my. I keep forgetting what the, I gotta keep going back to the page. Plus nine for history on this place. Um, again, like I told you before about the city of Valor, very prominent. The uh, 300 years ago. Um, well, I'm, I'm I'm more looking about uh, structure stuff. If there's anything I notice, like his, history wise, with this, because now we actually see the city. Yes, it's um. It's rather dilapidated, very run down. Uh, the only thing that still stands are are um, are just some of the uh, just the temple and uh, one other building that you can't necessarily tell what it was for because it was um, it just it's the the stone is uh, slowly eroding away. Could I tell by the history of this place where the treasure might be? Uh, definitely in the temple. That's uh, that is where. Uh, Professor Herbert said that it was, um, and you know that uh, that the temple uh, did house a lot of artifacts and uh, valuable treasures within it. Okay. Like I said, I trust my own eyes rather than these other guys. So, <laughs> rather than the professor. Huh, surprisingly, the professor's map was uh, at least accurate. So. Good enough for me. Uh, he wasn't a total idiot. Yeah. I mean, he's still an idiot, but... Of course, we're having this conversation away from them. You know, just make the professor feel nice. <laughs> Shall we venture inside? So as you move further in, the professor's like, By Jove! What a city! Oh, to imagine what it was like back in the day. Oh, ho. Oh, it just gives me all the goose pimples. <laughs> I'm um, sure, like, I'm quick, sure, quick. like any civilization, they were the poor were crushed below the rich. Good question, big scaly. Um, can you see in the dark? What do we need that for? I've still got my light up. Yeah, uh, calm, calm down. I don't we think don't, I, I don't think I have dark vision. We won't need you and I will not need to actually have a light on. 
in order to see our way down there. But we have a uh, an armored friend here who might need to see in the dark. And then we have three other people who might also need to see in the dark. So I just want to make sure before we actually go forward, if people can see in the dark. Well, Dane Fair like, enough. I am okay, but I would prefer if there was a light or something. Uh, well, we're, we're still leading this thing, so if you don't mind, Professor, this is where you come of use. While we proceed inside the temple, I want you to lead us down. Um, uh, of course, it would be you... my honor, good boy. <laughs> I want uh, them and his two patsies to lead us as well. Big Duke could stay in the back. As you wish. Uh, as you enter into the temple, uh, you can see the inside while seeing some age still is very grand and pristine um for being 300 years old that is um and not seeing any uh any upkeep kind of reminds you a bit of your tower nice i knew i recognized this kind of artistry and stonework really pretty sure this exists in almost like every stone structure Especially if you're not really maintaining the stones. I can't see in the dark. <laughs> it took you that long to fucking figure that out? Jesus Christ! <laughs> His guy's intellect is really low. <laughs> I cannot see in the dark. <laughs> like, I love how he probably walked into the dark and then determined he couldn't see in the dark. <laughs> Let me see if I can see in the dark. I've never actually tested it. I can't see a damn thing. <laughs> <coughs> right, okay. That question's well, been answered. Um, so anyone who can't see in the dark, I suggest you kind of huddle around this man to sort of, I guess, create a protective wall of death. And, uh... <laughs> oh. <clears throat> what? Oh, well, what? To, inc to increase our uh, scene range, I'll cast yet another spell. So I already got the light up. I can put on uh, where where is it at? Investiture of flame, which also shows uh, like a little bit more. It should put a little bit more light. It says it says it's shed, shedding a bright light at a thirty foot radius, and a dim light for an additional thirty feet. I can do one better. You can do one better. Yes. By all means. Save um, me the magicka. <laughs> Are we having a magic pissing contest right now? No. All right, good. Um, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm I, gonna. I whisper to you. <laughs> um, give me an object. Somebody, give me an object. Mm, I raise my staff. Coat. A what? The professor's coat. Oh, that's pretty good. I like. I like the no something, coat. something, something. You can. I. Some, you know what? Even better. I'm gonna cast daylight on my spear on my hellbird. Okay. Uh, a bright light uh, emits from your halberd. You can see. Very how far can how how far is that bright light work thing? How, how sixty far feet. That, uh, sixty you... feet is light, and then sixty more feet is dim light. All right, that's good. So I basically, one hundred twenty feet. <clears throat> nice. So we can see literally any distance yeah. in here now. Yeah, in a, in in, in, a, in a sixty foot radius. Well, One hundred twenty feet, we can see. So, all right, I turn off my lights. He's got it. All right, <clears throat> that works. So as you venture deeper into the temple, there is a pathway that leads uh, down. <laughs> And uh, the professor says, it should be under here, good boy. So, <laughs> I shall One sec. Charge. One sec. I'd like to roll perception to determine if there's traps or something going on here. Uh, you can certainly try. I rolled a 14 plus, say, 7. Um, 
to your knowledge, and also given in with the history of the place, they didn't really trap the temple. Hey, I don't know what kind of treasure tra traps we got here, but all right, cool. Well, I don't, I don't exactly trust just you know gazing at something and seeing if it's trapped or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of like wave my hand. I'm gonna see if there's any magic here. And I cast Detect Magic at first level. Okay. And as you do that, you get um, you get that nauseated feeling. Uh, from what you could tell that uh, Sarion and Uthadek were suffering from uh, before you entered the jungle. Oh, man. We were halfway into the jungle when the drugs kicked in. Holy shit. <laughs> at this point is when the acid happened. Whoa! <laughs> I want to I want to read in this this temple Barstow for some reason. Don't ask me why. <laughs> this is bat country. Uh, I'm gonna turn to you and go. I'm gonna turn to you and whisper. Eat been eating the paint chips much? <clears throat> oh, just maybe <clears throat> detecting magic is a bit strong here. So yes, there's magic. What kind of magic? Everything. Is, is there anything specifically coming from the uh, the the door or the the um the stairwell? The stairwell, yeah. Uh, it seems that the magic trails down there. All right, so well, I can at least I can at least determine that there's um, magic going down here. So, <clears throat> Stanler, don't just go touching any glyphs or anything like that. <laughs> Professor, and you're, you know what a glyph is, right? Uh, um, yes, I'm gonna use. Why don't you uh, uh, explain it to my other friends so that they also know? <laughs> I'm going to make. I'm going to make a glyph with my predestination. Press the digitation. Yes, a little mark that appears on us on the surface of the wall, and I'm gonna say this is what a glyph looks like. Essentially, that is the idea of what a glyph looks like. It's basically a magical symbol that is imbued onto something. It's not always visible, but at the same time, if you find anything, don't touch it. Don't just go touching it. If it looks like it has a magical symbol, don't fucking touch it. Tell us. <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Right, old boys. Okay, of course. Yes. Um, yeah. Onward. <laughs> I have a feeling you're going to die down here. <laughs> uh, what was that? <laughs> what? Uh, what was that, uh, uh, good sir? Oh, nothing. Just move on. Let's keep, let's keep going. Epic foreshadowing. <laughs> so we, we, lead, we lead on and take, I take point. So I'm assuming everybody continues on down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're this, as far as I know, we're still in the same order. Uh, him, me, you. How how big is the hall? Is the, is the hallways? Are they like, narrow? Are they wide enough for all of us um, to. They're about twenty feet wide, so you you sh you should be able to to have your same formation and not have a problem. Okay. Excellent. But you are you are actually you are essentially standing next to um, uh, Professor Herbert with the other uh, with the others uh, Orwin and Dedane, um because they because Professor Herbert was told that he's leading down, so he's trying to keep the front he's he's very excited okay so while you're technically taking point technically he's taking point he's a little bit further ahead of you but you're next to him okay so as you venture deeper in i need everybody to roll me a perception check 18 plus my seven of perception uh, I'm not paying too much attention, but 14. Um, 18. Okay. Good enough. Um, it's to the point where even if you can't sense or detect magic, but all of you can, um, it's now getting to the point where you don't even have to cast the detect magic spell to be able to feel the magic in the air. I'm I'm gonna drop detect magic as soon as it gets that strong. I'm yeah, because it's it's, it's okay. going it's going to get ex yeah you're you're gonna get really sick. All right, yeah. okay. that's too much. Right. 
Hmm. I got this tingly sensation. Can you feel the magic tonight? <laughs> Very yes. potent. Very potent. Yes. As I would say with a blatant face, yes, we all can. <laughs> Even the non-magical folk. How, how are you liking your first touch of magic here? I, I do say, I, I, I feel like I'm, I might vomit. <laughs> well, that's unkept magic. That's just that kind of exploded everywhere. So there's a difference between the magic that you have within you that you actually... I'm not going to go into the explanation. Leave our simple tens alone. It's okay. It's fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> they don't. Uh, yeah, they we... don't... Just a pretty bastard, anyways. <laughs> so you say that with a shine in your teeth. Yes. <laughs> you guys uh, move forward, um, and now with the magic in the air, I want everybody to make a perception check disadvantage. <laughs> Uh, Disadvantage, you roll, you roll twice and you take the lower number. I'm so mad. Oh, I rolled a one. <laughs> I'm so mad that I had to roll at disadvantage because the second roll was a 20. And, that 20, and I'm so upset, but I still got a 26. I rolled um, a one. I got, I got a 15. The one time I rolled a one. Nice. Um. So, Connor, you hear, um, as you move further in, you hear something uh, along, the, along the wall. Like, you, you hear and feel a presence uh, next to you. Everyone stop. Well, he should, he'd have to say that you wouldn't. Oh, Connor, this way. My bad. I'm, I'm Connor. <laughs> my bad, my bad. I Everyone keep just thinking... Stop. There's something here. What 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 seems to be the, the problem, good boys? Well, uh, as 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 I am explaining, there's something here. I don't know what it is. I feel something. Presence. It's in the area. I'm gonna just at this point, I'm going to cast because I've had enough of this guy. I'm going to cast telepathic. And I'm gonna just communicate with his mind and, and just input the information in there. <clears throat> I'm tired of throwing some words on this guy. <laughs> to, to who? And instantly to the professor. And then I'm gonna instantly cut that communication because I don't want to keep my brain in there. Too much shit in there. Oh, uh, 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 that was a that was a feeling. Oh, I do say. And at that moment, a fist breaks through the wall. A large ungodly fist breaks through the wall and grabs the Dane and he's like and he gets pulled through the wall and you hear as he is pulled through you hear oh fucking shit I actually called it oh my god (laughs) well I'm gonna cast ice wall at the wall (laughs) wall of ice (laughs) it is uh Seven, it's an eight level spell, so. Part of me thinks we should actually move on, keep moving past this thing, but at the same time, <laughs> have to come back. I, like I said, I cast it at the wall, I'm closing that shit off. <laughs> God, I, I know, I know, and, and at the same time, I don't think it's gonna help us. Um, kind of in a Run? <laughs> situation here. What's hurt? What's, what's make a little more haste? <laughs> Yo, what? I cast a wall of ice. Okay. Uh, eighth level spell at the wall, and then I yelled at everybody. Let's let's make some haste. <laughs> yeah. So you begin uh, running down the hall. Yeah. Uh, I would. I'm not running, but I'm at a slow trot at this point. Not not walking <laughs> anymore. You know, I'm kind of like yeah. Power you know, like that power bullshit. Jogging. Power that walking. Bullshit, that, yeah, that bullshit grandma jog thing. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, you guys are making a little bit more haste. Uh, roll me another perception check disadvantage. Oh, so... ah! Thank God I keep rolling low numbers. I only got an 11. 12. 24. Uh, Connor, you feel that presence once again, and it is keeping pace with you guys. 
Oh no, this is not this is not good. It's not good at all. Um, it's back and it's keeping pace with us. I think it's trying to kill us. I'm pretty sure we have to kill it. Uh, Orwin then pulls out his pistol. Don't worry, I'm. Uh, I'll get it. I'll shoot it. I'll actually use this thing for once. Do you have any follow-up shots with it? It would take a bit to reload, but uh, yes, I, I have extra. I have extra bullets. Ah, uh, fucking hell. Okay. All right. Well. Um, as yeah. as he uh. says that, the fist comes through and grabs him. <laughs> Fires off a shot. He gets through the wall. And another one bites dust. And I cast the wall of ice at the wall. I'm pretty sure <laughs> we're gonna have to deal with that thing. Um, is it was it just a hand? Like we we it can is like a I, giant ungodly fist. I kind of feel like that isn't an actual monster. I feel like that's like an, a magical attack. What? Uh, what? Uh, do, can I tell what the fist is like made out of? Does it look organic or or does it look? Yeah, because we we have magic things here. Yeah. Can we like... use? Ma- so, uh, the fist is a pale blue, and um, from what you can tell, um. It seem it, it doesn't seem to be a magical uh, fist. Just a giant pale blue fist coming through the wall. Yes. <laughs> well, oh, oh god! Uh, so as that happens, I'm just like, oh man! All right. Uh, like I said, I I would be like this and cast the wall. We have a mad <laughs> user in the area, so that's nice. We have a what? Magic user. I oh, no. that's be right back. Ugh. That's that's incredible. Okay, well, so we might have to deal with Grundy here. Well, Grundy is just a hand. It's who's controlling Grundy that I'm concerned with. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, um, do we press on or do we uh, try to fight this thing? If we press on, the professor's gonna fucking die. And the problem with that is. A lot of things. Um, our tank is not here. Give as, us a minute. Um, as uh, you guys are having this conversation, uh, Sigurd begins walking up, and then from under him, the two two arms reach up, grab his legs, and pull him down uh, through this thin hole, being as big as he is, essentially... As he's getting pulled down, the skin just and muscle and tissue just shaves off the front of him and just and you just see a just big flap of just meat just hit the ground. Can I collect he's that? Pulled <laughs> to the floor. Can I collect that? Sure. So <laughs> I'm gonna collect the meat. <laughs> Bigums just turned into a giant flesh suit. We might need this later. Wait, I can't what even just say that with a straight face. I can't even say that with a straight face. <laughs> we might need. Th- I'll say it with. A- we might need this later. I don't think we, we do. Um, but whatever your sick fucking game is, I, I, I want no part of it. Um, yeah, I think we we're gonna have to fight whatever this thing is, and um, I don't think if we go any further that. Uh, did you see what happened? <laughs> you see the bone? The professor is freaking out and he just books it straight down the path that you guys are going. Professor, oh, son of hold a on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm grabbing the fucking. I am grabbing the fucking professor. We're we're standing here. I'm grabbing he's, the professor with the fucking he's, goddamn. He's next to. He's next to. Um, oh, who did it? Me. Deck. I, I'll but grab I him then. Tele- I have telekinesis. Oh, okay. So you're gonna cast telekinesis on him. Does he have to make a save? Um, I can I can try to move a huge or smaller creature. Make an ability check with your spell casting ability contested to by the creature's strength check. Okay. So yeah. So just roll against uh, roll against my roll. Uh, 
I only rolled a 13. Let me see what I got for strength, though. Oh, it's your spellcasting ability modifier, so it would be your intelligence. Oh, okay, well and, then... Uh, and it should say in your spells what your spellcasting ability modifier is. Say in my spells? Um, I think your, I think your uh, ability modifier is plus 9. Yeah. Yeah, it's so, plus 9. So it's 22. Well, he rolled a natural 20. This man is in fear of his life. And he has, like, idiot strength at this point in resistance of mind. <laughs> Uh, and just is booking it. Well, I'll say so much for the professor. <laughs> okay, but at the same time, without him, I don't think we're going to find what we came here for. Hey, hey, he could try to grab him now. I, I, I did my part. Once more, pointing out what? that we are probably going to have to fight. <sighs> Fucking hell. And I'm going to run after the professor now. All right. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna run too and, and help. Uh, I'm gonna teleport to the professor now because fuck this guy. So as um as he's running, uh, you get to a a large uh, room with a with a huge door, and the professor stops. <laughs> oh, I found it. Oh, oh, good boys. Oh, we have found the the pathway to the treasure. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> and at that moment, a a loud roar can be heard. Just and then the gigantic form drops down in front of the professor. It is a it is giant. <sighs> it is an Empyrean. Oh, the hell's an Empyrean? Oh, Fuck all kinds of duck. Basically a giant with like a construct. This is an Empyrean. Yeah. Um, oh. Like, like a I said, like, it's a, it's a like giant. A giant, giant like, yeah, like a giant marble statue come to life. Essentially. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a giant that's like a construct. That's really what it is. I knew this was a trap, man. And I need everybody to roll initiative. Oh. What one do you roll for that? A six? Uh, no, you roll a twenty. Yeah, you twenty initiative bonus. Ooh. All right, an eighteen. That's not good for me. Um, but plus, and you said plus my initiative bonus? Yes. Twelve. Fifteen. That's a twenty-two. All right. So let me see. Oof. All right, so that's going to be Sarion, the Empyrean. Um, uh, Anthony, what was your roll again? 14. Oh, 12, 12. Uh, and uh, Chris? Uh, 15. Okay, so... All right. I'm still... Well, I'm still maintaining mage armor here. Alrighty, so as you begin, uh, sorry, on it's your turn. The Empyrean is in front of you uh, and in front of the professor and blocking the door. Since I should know what an Empyrean is, what's our weaknesses? Doesn't have any. Is it strong to a specific spell type? No. All right. Uh, free hands then. How many attacks do I? Get? How many moves do I get before I um, uh, have you, to quit? You get uh, an action, a bonus action, and you have movement. Um, for spells, uh, depending on what the spell is, it'll say either one action or one bonus action it takes to cast. Uh, I will help you out with that. I have your spell sheet up right now. Um, it'll just say either 1A or 1BA, but it looks like on your... And you have Counterspell as a reaction, which you can do on... Not on your... You don't have to do... On, you can do on somebody else's turn. Um, uh, but all your spells are in action, so you only get one spell per turn. 
All right, cool. I'm going to do fifth level lightning bolt. Fifth level lightning bolt. All right, that is um, he has to make a deck save of seventeen. Okay. Here we go. Unfortunately, it makes it save of eighteen. Uh, so Damn, on, I hit nothing. That, it, no, it, you uh, you still roll damage. It just takes half that. Okay. So whatever damage you roll, it takes half. Uh, so you roll ten d six. All right. My roll is five, six, one, and three for the first ones, and then, goddamn, then one, three, five, and four, and then a two and a one. All right. So that comes out to, I didn't have my, my pencil ready to do math. Um, Uh, I think that comes out to 23. What, when the, with the subtraction? No, uh, the, the amount of damage you just did. Does it have, does it have a total on there? Yeah, it's, uh, it takes 24. Yeah, oh, 24. Close. Close off by one. Um, so it takes half that, so it takes 12 damage. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. I mean, it's nothing, but you know. I mean, it, something's better than nothing. So, 12 damage. And, uh... Is there anything you wanted to do for your, uh, uh movement? Did you want to move anywhere specifically? Well, I'm kind of, I'm kind of at the back anyway, right? Yeah. I'll be all right back here. Okay. Sounds good. Um... That brings it up to the Empyrean's turn. And it notices that you just uh, hit it with a lightning bolt. So instead, so what it's going to do um, is it's going to use its bolt attack, and it's going to attempt to hit you. And uh, with mage armor up, what is your AC? It's a plus fifteen. So, oh wait, is it plus 15? Hold uh, on, let 13, me pull that up. 13 plus dexterity okay. modifier. So your AC is oh. just 13. Okay. Instead of 10. So, good to know. Also, uh, if he's going to cast the thing at me, I'm going to cast Counterspell. Counterspell? At what yeah. Level? It's at third. Oh, I'm sorry, I can cast it. I can cast it all the way up to the level. You can cast it as high as you want. Oh, shit, yeah, I can. I'm going to cast it at max level, man. I would, all I would, that shit. Look, don't I wouldn't I wouldn't waste your ninth level slot. You only oh, you're right. Those. I don't have a ninth or your, level. Or eight, I wouldn't waste uh, I wouldn't waste your high level slots. You only get a certain amount of those. If you want to okay. counter spell it, um, you want to go with the lowest spell okay. slot that you have, and then keep working your way up. It, it right, doesn't do it. I'll... potency with each one. It's just you can hit more creatures with it if. Maybe. Okay, then yeah, I'll cast on third. I'm cool with third. All right, uh, you counter the spell, no problem. Uh, and so that ends its turn, and that comes up to Uta deck. I'm going to. Uh, it's about. Uh, it is thirty feet away from you. Okay, how far is the professor from me? Um, fifteen feet. He's 15 feet, and that's 30 feet. I'm going to uh, tell. I'm going to. So it's 30 feet away from me. He's 15 away. So I'm going to go 15 feet. Okay. And and uh, tell the professor to get behind me. All right. Is that going to be your action? What to tell him to get behind me? Like like you're moving and you're holding up there, or. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna hold up there. I'm, I'm gonna get in front of him. Okay. 
Um, and then I'm going to cast. Where is it at? At least you're on bonus action. Um, armor of Agathus. Yep. Okay. At at third oh. at third level. Okay, so you get 15 temporary hit points. Yep. And if it attacks you, it takes 15 cold damage. Okay. Uh, is that all you still have in action? Because that's a bonus action. No, I'm I'm Agathus is an action. Oh, it's an action. I thought you said it was yeah. bonus action. All right, no, no, no problem. I said I, I said I have a lot of bonus actions that don't do nothing unless I attack somebody. Okay. Uh, so is that the end of your turn then? Yeah. Okay. Um, Connor. All right. Um. Good God, so many things I could do. Uh oh. Uh, here's one. I pull out of my satchel a tart and a feather, and I hold the tart in my left hand while it's using the feather to wave around it. And I look at the uh, creature and I say, do you know why divorces cost so much? Because they're worth it. And I cast Tasha's hideous laughter. What's the save? Uh, 16, wisdom. Natural 20. All right. Uh, damn it! Wait, 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 wait. It's a good joke, though. <laughs> Do I have something? Do I have something? No, I should have taken luck. Damn it. Uh. Uh. Yeah. No. Uh, obviously, he's. He just, he stopped it. <laughs> Never mind. Shit, didn't make a pro. Fuck. It was a, it was a good attempt. Uh, sorry, on you're up again. Hmm. I'm going to try casting a fireball at it. A fireball? Oh, fireball? What level? Yeah. I'll do third level to start. Oh, okie dokie. Third level fireball. The deck save is 17. That is... 16, so you're going to do full damage to it. Eight Finally! Alright, 8d6. Alright. So... It is... The first four are a sum of 10. 2, 2, 4, 2, and 1. The second four are a sum of 12. 3, 3, 5, and 1. All right. That is 22. 22 damage that he is taking to his face for uh, fire. Okay. Um, and now it's the Empyrean's turn. And uh, mad that it keeps, uh, keeps getting hit by these, uh, by these magic spells... Uh, what it's going to do is hmm. so much it's going to um, it's going to first uh, attack um, Ujadek with its maw. how far so it's coming it's coming up to attack me it moves five feet and it that's has... in my range Okay. I get an opportunity attack. Okay. Uh, go ahead. Because of pole of because of polar master. Okay. Uh, let's see, Fee, where is it at? Oh, where where is it? Um. Should be in your feet. Yeah, yeah. When the, uh, I can uh, provoke an opportunity, uh, they provoke an opportunity attack when they're in my reach. And since I have a hellbird, it's ten feet. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll to hit. Um, that is a twenty to hit. You miss. Oh. Well. Okay. As as the Empyrean is uh, um, swinging at uh, uh, Utadek or Ededek, as I've been calling him, 
I'm gonna look at him and I'm gonna say, "You turned out stupid, and your face is one that only a mother can make." <laughs> and I use cutting, cutting words. words. Uh, how much are you reducing the roll? Eight. Eight. Ooh, good. Uh, Utadek, what is your AC? 16. It misses. It rolled, a, it rolled an 18 and then minus 8. Is it a 18? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Just gonna wink at the uh, Imperium. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I love this man. Before Utadek's turn, it's gonna use one of its legendary actions to attempt to attack Utadek again. Son of a bitch. What's it attacking him with? Uh, the mall again. That is a uh, 32. Jesus. He doesn't like you. Uh, does that hit your AC? Yes. <laughs> okay. I don't know um, anybody with an AC high at 32. So now you're going to take... 66 damage plus 10 bludgeoning. Holy shit. Alright, so 66 plus 10, that's what, 76? No, 6d6. Oh, 6d6. I thought you said 66 too, and I was like, damn, that, didn't that would damn near one shot my ass. Uh. 27 damage. Uh, minus 15. Uh, yeah, because your temporary hit points. And so that's it what's... takes also 15 damage from the yeah. 15 cold damage from armor of Agathus. And so I, of Agathus I take drops. I take 12 damage. Yes. Okay. Um, now I need you to make a Constitution saving throw. Hold on. No. Uh. So, three, and then 12 more. Okay, con saving throw? Yes. It's 25? Yeah, you save. So, the maul comes down, and as it missed the first time, it swings back and clocks you right on the, right on the chin, and it... It, uh, you feel that you may have fractured. It may have fractured your jaw just now. Hmm. Um, that shit's stumbling back, bro. Yeah. Um, if it would have hit more flush, you would have gone flying. But you hold your ground in front of the professor, protecting him. Okay. The, pre the professor hasn't moved in the whole round of turns. He's frozen in fear. That wouldn't. Be <sighs> oh, do be careful. Lizard man. And now, uh, Utadek, it is your turn. Uh, where is it at? <sighs> it is ten feet in front of you. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to. I have a move for somebody who's freaking fearful, who's feared. So many things. All right, since it's 10 feet in front of me, I am going to attack it. Okay. That is a... ...24. 24 hits. All right. And I'm going to bonus action. Channel Divinity. No, Thunder, uh, no, no, that's a creature. Let's see which one. Let's do third level. Um, Searing Smite, third level. Okay. Um, that will, that gives you, um, fire damage. Three, right? yeah, it, it adds on, uh, three, where is it, third level. Uh, 3d6 of fire damage. Okay, so on top of your 1d10, you roll 3d6 fire damage. 
and one and more and another one d eight of radiant damage since I'm level I'm higher than level eleven. Yeah. So d ten. Move that. That's ten plus four. That's fourteen. And then how many? I said three d six. Three d six of fire and one d eight of radiant. That is thirteen for fire. And then that's a one for uh, radiant damage. Uh, is your how uh, you have a you have a thing that makes all your weapons magical, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you're doing full damage. Twenty-eight damage. Okay. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna move back. Uh, Are you gonna move the professor with you back? Yes, I'm, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move him back. So I'll say you have half movement on that then. Okay, then I'm gonna move him back 15 feet with me. Okay. Um, as you leave his reach, uh, it provokes an attack of opportunity. Uh, okay. Uh, 34. Yes. And yep, sixty-six plus ten. Oh, he's not frightened. Huh? The the professor can't be frightened. Or or of courage. He's within oh, ten yeah. feet of me. He's within ten feet of me. Oh, okay. You're right. So he's not frightened. He feels uh, an unexplained sense of vigor, even though he does not want to move forward. So he could go forward that whole distance then. Well, still, still, yeah. I guess you could. He can move alongside you thirty feet. But even still, you're still taking the attack of opportunity, which that's, is that's okay. Uh, Thirty-one damage. Okay. And make a constitution saving throw. Six plus seven, thirteen plus. Plus what? Um, plus four, so that's seventeen. Plus four. What's the plus four from? Aura protection. You get a plus four to all your saving throws. Yep. Yep. Everybody plus me within ten feet of me. You are a lucky son of a bitch, because yeah, you would have you would have failed that DC. Yep. So anybody within ten feet of me, I'll get uh, a plus four to all the saving throws, and it can't Elens. be frightened. Elens are awesome. All right, is that the uh, end of your turn? Yes, sir. Uh, Connor. All right, I am going to. No, it doesn't. Uh, doesn't say I need anything specific. I'm just going to raise my hand up to the Empyrean, and I'm just like. You can't see us. And I'm going to cast Blindness on him. Ooh, what's the save? Uh, 16. I'm casting it at second level. Uh, uh, 16 dex? Con? Con? Yeah. 15. Ha! He can't see shit! And before my turn is over, I'm going to turn to Utadek, and I'm going to say, <clears throat> Utadek, show <laughs> us the secrets of your power. Utadek, won't you kill this Imperial right fucking now? <laughs> I'm giving him Bardic take your, Inspiration. Take your D8 of Bardic Inspiration. Woo! D8. What can I use it on? Uh, uh, saving rolls throws and saving throws. And, yeah. Oh. Saving throws, attack rolls, and ability checks. Okay. I'm about to, I'm about to mess this whole man's game on my next turn. For the next uh, 10 minutes, you have in part of inspiration. Okay. And now that comes to... Uh, that's the end of your turn? Yeah, that's my, uh, my turn. 
Sarion. Magic missile. Actually, you know what? Hold on. Since that stuff, since, since he's like that, and he can't. If he's blind, he can't see this shit coming. But so, uh, let's go with the uh, a nice fifth level lightning bolt. Okay, uh, he loses his advantage on saving throws against magic, um, because he's blind. So now it's just a straight roll. What the disadvantage would impose, now it's just regular. So, uh, the save for Lightning Bolt is a 17 dex. <coughs> yeah, he's gonna take full damage. He rolled an 8. So that's 10 D6s. <laughs> Alright, let's see. The first couple are going to be... A sum of 20. I'll just give you the sums. Okay. The second four are a sum of 11. And the last two are a sum of 7. So that is 38. 38 lightning. Well, bam! And I believe that is your last fifth level spell. No, I did not cast a second fifth level spell. I cast a. That was the first one I cast was a. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. I did cast that. So that is. So you are now out of fifth level spells. How long does that last for? Uh, until you take a long rest. Yeah, uh, the, one of the drawbacks to being spellcaster classes is that we need long rests in order to regain most of our shit. The only thing that I get in a short rest is my bardic inspirations. Yeah, being a caster is a lot about managing your uh, your spell slots. Yeah, you really got to think about what you want to cast, when you want to cast it, things of that nature. It's, you you need to be strategy minded uh, to be a, a decent spellcaster, which is one of the reasons why I went with bard. Because I can be strategy minded, but I mostly support. I'm just the so good. background. You're doing a great job. All right. It's <laughs> all so good. Um, it's the con. It's the thing's turn. Yes. Roll a con save. Uh, for what? It's on fire. Oh, that's right. It is on fire, technically, from your uh, your smite. Steering smite. Yep, steering smite. Uh, I, I also hit him with a fireball earlier. Uh, that doesn't necessarily ignite it. It just... I mean, the part of that part of the paladin spell is that it ignites it. The fireball just... Uh, just blasts it. The save is 17. Uh, con save, he makes it. Mm. Roll the 17, exactly. Ooh, even with disadvantage? No, it's just a straight roll. Oh. Uh. Um. So, at, it, um. It will go ahead and attempt to, uh. Oh shit! It has true sight, so it actually blind blind doesn't even affect it. True sight, it can still see if it's blinded. Well, uh, <laughs> good job, DM, who's supposed to be uh, reading the book. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fine. I'll let all that happen, and we'll just say the blindness fades. Uh, that it just didn't activate its true sight. Now it did. There we go. All fixed. <laughs> oh, of course, yeah. No, no. Now we can fucking see again. Damn it. All right. Um, so yeah, uh, since it it can see, it's going to uh, cast its bolt at um, at Connor. Oh no! He said bolt. Yes. Counter spell. <laughs> He's like counter spell. Fuck your shit. <laughs> And I believe that is your last third level slot. So you counter no. twice and you fireballed once. But I didn't fireball with second or third level, I fireballed with fourth level. Oh, fair enough. Alright, yeah, you have one more third level spell then. Okay. 
Uh, so yeah, it just fails. <laughs> um, my turn again. Um, it's gonna use its legendary action to bolster itself. Um, he can't be charmed or frightened, and he gains advantage on ability checks and saving throws until the end of his next turn. Can that be counterspelled? Uh, no, it's a legendary action, not a spell. Uh, Wait, it can be what? It can't be frightened or charmed. Gains it gains advantage on ability checks and saving throws until the end of its next turn. Okay. Uh, now okay. it's your turn. All right. I'm going to uh, since now I have the uh, the what's his name? The professor. The professor. I'm gonna I'm gonna go within ten feet of it again, and I'm gonna attack it. Okay. Roll the hit. Uh, twenty-three. Twenty-three hits. Then I'm gonna use staggering smite. Uh, what save does he have to make? Uh, no save. Uh, well, he does have to make a uh, wisdom saving throw. Okay, so then there is a save. Yeah. Uh... Uh, what is your save DC? 17. 15. He does not make the save. Oh, so I said 17, but it's okay. Yeah, I said he doesn't make the save. He rolled a 15, so he doesn't make the save. Okay, so he's going to take... The so 1d8, I mean the d10, regular damage, that's 10, then 4d6 of psychic damage, that is 8, plus, that's 14, so that's 24, then 1d8 of radiant damage, Where are you? D8. There you are. The 7. So that's 31 damage. Plus 4. Mm -hmm. You forgot to add the 4 for your 1d10 plus 4. Yeah, plus 4. Uh, so, so that's 35. 35. And since it failed a saving throw, it has disadvantages on attack rolls, ability checks, and can't take reactions until the end of its next turn. Um... Okay, so because of its bolster, it's going to just be straight rolls. So you cancel out its advantage that it had. Okay. So, nice! And it's no longer bolstered, basically. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah, I, I yes. said Connor. Okay, I, I didn't hear there were too many people talking at once. No problem. Um, Time for ham. So I am then going to look at the um, at the Empyrean, take his thumb, prick it on one of his uh, um, sharp teeth, specifically, squeeze a little bit uh, enough for a drop of blood to come out, wave his hand, and then say, "This is really gonna fucking hurt." And I cast Bane at second level. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, third level. Uh, so, what is the save DC? Uh, it is Charisma 16. Fucking one. Ha! <laughs> Bane. The Bane of any DM's existence. At least you got to use it back on me. Fair enough, yeah, yeah. Screw you. <laughs> um, and then uh, I'm going to I'm, I'm actually I'm just going to move a little further back so I'm, I'm just kind of out of range mm -hmm. uh, not of his magic but like I don't want to be too close yeah, to him you guys can't be out of range of his magic I would just say that yeah obviously his, 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 uh, his ability to hit us is going to be impressive yeah it's uh, 600 feet range <laughs> ridiculous alrighty uh, so that's your turn it comes back to Sarion 
All right, so I'm going to cast Ray of Frost, which is a cantrip. Yeah, okay. It does not have a saving throw. Right, you just roll your spell attack modifier. Yes. Now, which one is the spell attack modifier one? Your, you, yours is plus nine. Okay, so I just add that to this to this to roll? D, to the d20 roll, yes. To the d20. Okay, it is a 19. 19 unfortunately misses. Dang. So you, as you cast your Ray of Frost, it just, just goes right past it. Oh, well. Better aim next time. And that's going to be your turn. Uh, comes up to the Empyrean. Uh, so now that it's, um, well, it's still technically bolstered, but also the other side, so it's just straight rolls. Um, it's going to, um, it regains its legendary actions, um, and it is going to use two of them to use its trembling strike. Uh, everybody needs to make a strength saving throw, please. Within 60 feet of the creature, which is everybody. That's me. 18. 18. Yeah, d20. Okay. Oh, I rolled. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. You guys get plus four. They're not within we do? 10 feet of you. Nat 20. I Plus will... whatever I got. Natural 20. Uh, plus plus whatever I got. Saving throw, which is zero. Yep. I feel bad to have to do this. You still don't make it. Yay. Because it's, the DC is 25. Uh, so I don't think anybody made it, right? Oh, I was close. Close is not good enough. Only counts on horseshoes and hand grenades. Why did I roll a nat 20 on something that doesn't even matter anyway? <laughs> <It's>, that's <laughs> where I roll my nat 20. It sucks when you when you fight against like creatures like this, because like, you still have to meet the DC, even if you get a nat 20. If you can't add up to the DC, it still goes through. It sucks. Very uh, sad. On saving throws, however, when you roll a nat 20, it's supposed to automatically add 10 to it. Oh, it does? Yeah, I believe that is actually the ruling on it, but I could be wrong. I mean, I'm of the I'm of the mind that nat 20 means that it generally succeeds. I'm of that mind. So you know what? I'll go with the the plus 10. That sounds like that's that sounds plausible. Uh, so the only thing is just that uh, everybody who fails the save is not prone. Yeah, I'm on my so, ass. So, did I did I did I make it you, then? Yeah, we'll we'll say you succeeded because you rolled a nat twenty and adding a plus ten to it. Oh, thank God! I, I can't survive much hit anyway. Woo! So uh, everybody else is prone currently on the ground. Uh, you are still standing, uh, and that's going to be its turn. Uh, Utsu, prone prison. You are prone. What you gonna do? Of me? Yes. Um, I'm gonna get from being prone. Uh, so you use half your movement to stand up. Yeah, and I'm still within. I'm still feet. within range. Yeah, I'm still within ten feet. So I'm gonna attack it again. All right, roll the hit. Um, that is plus. I'm going to use Great Weapon Fighting, so that's neg 5, so that's plus 4. Um, and for Bardic Inspiration, I get to roll a what? D... A D8. A D8? Just for future reference, oh. you have to you have to call it before you roll. It's a oh, D12. Okay. It's a, you, you roll a D12. Oh, right. 15th level, it's a D12? Jesus. Yes. Nice. Oh, okay. 
Um, I'll then, then I won't use it if I have to call it before then. I won't. I won't do it then. I'll, I, I I'll didn't allow know. it because this is your first time really using it. If I can find my fucking D twelve. Roll two sixes. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. I mean, seriously. <laughs> Plus 10. Okay, so what's your total roll? Um, like 30. No, okay, it's the, yeah, yeah. Because I make 5 from it, so that's plus 4, plus 17 is 21, plus 10 is 30. 31, yeah. Yeah, 31. So, okay. you're going to hit. <sighs> Are you um, channel divinity with this? Because you can do that after you after you hit. That's something you can just dump. I can channel divinity. I thought ch channel divinity was channel divinity. Channel divinity is a paladin thing too. Yeah, I know that, but I thought it was a bonus action to channel divinity. You have a bonus action. Great, 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 great weapon master attack is a bonus action what? to nag the ten. Great weapon master, it's one bonus action to nag to do to do the nag five. I have Great Weapon Master and Polearm Master. Okay. One of its effects on your turn when you score a critical hit with a melee weapon to re or reduce a creature to zero HP with one, you can make one melee attack as a bonus action. The second, of the secondary thing, before you make a melee attack with a heavy weapon that you're proficient with, you can choose to take a negative five penalty. Okay, so, so I'll use bonus. This, this portion is you're you're just adding the damage so it's not the attack you're using your action attack to do this oh okay so you technically have extra attack you haven't been using it that's right i do have two attacks huh yep i've been uh, using the bonus of the action so so uh well you could be doing more damage but now it's okay but you have um divine smite oh you've been using that yeah um oh yeah your channel divinity you can use your Conquering Presence, um, or Guided Strike, uh, but that's um, that's also that like you could have been using that to for even for the the Great Weapon Master thing. So, well, I'm I'm this is my first time using Great Weapon. I've just been attacking into a bonus a bonus action with the uh, Smites. Well, no problem. You can actually even add your Smite into this too. So, all right. So I'm gonna use a second level Searing. Um. No, I'm going to use, yeah, Searing Smite second level. So, D10. That's 9 plus 14. So that's 23. Plus 2D6. That's 7. It has to make a, has to make a constitution save natural 20 so you do it does half of that oh no that's it, that's that's it yeah oh, okay never mind never mind yeah that, that's 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 just only for it. the set on fire just as as made concept of it on this turn and then the 1d8 five so what were we at 35 35 damage all right, then I'm gonna attack again because yeah. I have two you actions have per turn. You, you have two attacks per action. Yeah, I have two two attacks per action, and I keep forgetting. I don't hit. Even if I tried, I don't hit. Okay. Um. All right. Next up is Connor. Oh, there's not a whole lot I can do here. He's still immune to charms and such, right? Uh, no, his bolster effect has ended. Oh, okay. I don't have a whole lot of stuff here. Um... I guess... For the time being, then, um, I will misty step over to uh, Edidic 
and I will put my hand on him and cure uh, cure wounds at first level. All right. No clever remarks. <laughs> You've got this, Tom. Uh, you get a eight hit points back. So Chris heals eight hit points. Yes, I'm standing directly behind him now, kind of. Like, so you're next to the and professor. You, yeah. And say you said I got this, son. <laughs> you got this, son. Yeah. I mean, if you would actually hit it with an attack. I don't really do things like that, actually. Okay. <laughs> uh, sorry, on you're up. All right. Once again, I'm gonna use Bayer Frost on this bitch. This time. I rolled a fucking 14 plus 9. 23. Oh, for Oh my god! <laughs> I'm just getting pissed. Alright, it's a total of 18. Plus the uh, fact that he is now slowed. Oh, he gets slowed? Yeah, he, his speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. Nice. Yeah. So that was a total of 18 damage, you said? Yes. It's only 3d8s. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a good cantrip, though. I'd Jesus have Christ, I can do so much damage. I did not know this. We'll kill this thing! <laughs> uh, it is the Empyrean's turn. Um, uh, it is going to... Um, it's going to bolt... Uh, sorry, on. What's with this guy, man? What do you mean, bolt? Once again! It's going to use... What do you... What's... Once again, I'm right through a third level of my counterspell. There you go. There's your last third level. My last third level. Counterspell. I, I'm gonna, I, I picture my counterspell to be like slapping his hand with like magic, you know? Yep. It's just like he's about to like, like bolt you with the might of Zeus and just like stop. No, no, no. no. Uh, take that counterspell back. I'm gonna cast mine at uh, at, at fourth. I, I have fourth levels. Let me cast mine at third, and then that well, I have I have fourth levels. Yeah, no, I I'm sure you have plenty of like you know fourth, fifth, sixth, and, and so on. But like, you've been counterspelling him the entire time. You should at least have one third level spell still for the fight, oh. just in case. Okay, okay, okay. Counterspell him. <laughs> as right. as Sarian is about to cast counterspell. Connor is just like, no, I got it. <laughs> no, that's fine. Save your spells. He, he's like, whips, he whips it out and just. Then <laughs> <laughs> you're like, whip it out about. So you whip out your counter spell and uh, slap his <laughs> hand that was going to give you the might of. Give uh, sorry on the might of Zeus. And uh, it is now uh, fizzles. And it just it, it, it is infuriated. And so it's going to. Instead, it's just going to jump over you and run towards Sarion. Well, it can't go very far. Its its distance is reduced by 10 feet. Well, now it's only 40 feet instead of 50 feet. So it, it doesn't get to you, but it gets within 20 feet of you. All right, cool. Um, as it's leaving, uh, opportunity attacks... Uh, or. You already used your reaction, Connor, so uh, Utsunek, you have an opportunity attack. Oh, it's charging? It is. It's jumping over you to go to Sarkon. Oh. Huh. Um. That's 27? Yeah, that hits. Roll your damage. 11, 11 damage. Oh, okie dokie. And it, and it stops. You have Sentinel too? Yes. Yeah, he was telling no. me before you came onto the hangout. Thing. Yeah, I told you nothing's getting past me. Opportunity attack, you stop. <laughs> so as it attempts to jump, you 
hit it with your halberd and knock it back, and it sl it slams back in the position where it was. Um, it is furious, and it's going to use its legendary action to attack you. Okay. Natural one. Never mind. <laughs> it, it, it hurts itself, goddamn. In, in, in its blind rage, it swings above you and ends up pulling a muscle. Take one damage. <laughs> Four damage. Four damage from pulled muscle. Ouch. Uh, Uzak, it's your turn. Okay, so I just remembered that I can do this. So I'm about to end this. I'm about to do some 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 shady shit if I can hit. I'm going to attack, and I'm going to use the uh, no, I don't have it anymore. I'm going to attack and use great weapon fighting. That is a twenty-two. Twenty-two hits exactly. That is. So, when I hit, I'm going to uh, fuse my one of my feats, Channel Divinity, which doesn't use a bonus action. Then I'm going to use a second spell slot, uh, second level spell slot, to make it 3d8 radiant damage, and I'm going to do Searing Smite of second level to do. 2d6 of fire damage. Alright, roll all this, all this crazy so, The d10 is a 3 plus 14. That's 17. 2d6 uh, fire damage. That's 9. That's uh, 23. 26. And I get 26? Tw yeah, 3 plus 14 is 17. Then plus 9 is 26. Plus 9 is 26. Okay, then I get uh, 3d8 of divine uh, radiant, damage. radiant damage. Yeah, or do, or is it four? Because I since I have the other one too. Yeah, you would roll four because you have your other d8. Okay, so it's 4d8. <sighs> Gotta get on my d8. It's not a d8. D8. The DPS a d8 actually doing his job as a DPS. Quiet, you. <laughs> That's 13 and 18. So 18 plus 27? 26? 26. 26. 44. Yeah, 44 damage. Then I'm going to attack again. Okay, go ahead. I miss that bad. Nah, I got, I got 18. Oh, that's, even, that's good, but that sucks. Yeah. So that it will be the end of your turn, Connor. Uh, do something, you tiefling asshole. I'm. <laughs> <laughs> I have been doing as many debuffs to this fucking thing as I can, and also buff you guys. Okay, so don't give me any. Hey, hey man, lower that dex, that dex saving slow, bro. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I know. I am going to just look at him. I'm going to look at him. I'm going to say, you're too tall, you're kind of fat, that tunic actually makes you look really, really stupid. Your mall is ridiculous, it's all hell, and honestly, who the hell told you how to comb your hair? That is just atrocious. Come on, man, you just look like trash today. Vicious mockery. All right. Um, is that a roll to hit or a, a save? It's a wisdom of 16, uh, DC 16. 15. It's gonna take it. 
That's three. That's three D four psychic damage. Oh, one of them was cocked. That was almost max damage. Uh, nine total. It is a little hurt by your comments. <laughs> it's a little hurt. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna uh, out of the way again. Just like kind of run away from the the heavy DPS because that's not where I want to be. Hey, this, this this thing's getting annoying. I'm gonna cast a seventh level uh, whirlwind at it. Oh shit. <clears throat> So that's a deck save of 17. It got hit? Did it get hit? Nat 1. It failed, it failed the save. <laughs> Did it roll a Nat 1? No. Maybe. Kind of. <laughs> if it rolled a Nat 1, it's taking more damage, I would assume. But, uh, let's see. That is 10 D6s. Yes. All right, so the first four are a sum of 12, the second four are a sum of 15, and the last two are a sum of 10. And, and there's an added effect. The creature must now is now locked in that position. It is a 10-foot radius, 35-foot cylinder centered on that point until the spell ends, which is a one-minute-long spell. You can, it can use, I can use that action to move this anywhere I want. Um, he's being sucked into it. He cannot. He has to make a dexterity saving throw the first time on a turn that enters the whirlwind. And basically, until this ends, he has to keep making dex throws to get out. And does it it take? Um... It takes bludgeon damage. Okay. So if it if it's able to even make the save, it's hurled out of the whirlwind. And it takes 3d6 t for every 10 feet it flies. That's fucking stupid. <laughs> I love it. Fuck oh, this guy! <laughs> fucking high level wizard spells, man. Alright, so. It's restrained. Uh, so it's going to attempt to make a dexterity saving throw. Also, it must make, must make a con saving throw, too. All right, I'll roll two, two d20s then. All right, let's see. So, yeah. So it can't even attack yet. It makes both saves. It beat seventeen. The con, his con saving throw is a plus ten. Ooh. Um, his, uh, and his dex is a plus five, so he beats both of them. And he rolled 13 so, on both dice. So how far is he getting thrown away in a random um, direction? Now, with this room being as big as it is, uh, I'm going to randomly determine the direction by rolling a d8, because there's north, one, two, no, that's 12, so I'll roll d12 for each of the random directions it can go. One, it goes north. Or or uh, what I'm considering is north. Just straight back. No, it is eight. No, because it... No. One, north, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it's nine. I'll just stick with the number I rolled. It may, I don't want to make it too confusing. Um, so it flies straight back towards the door, um, which it is 60 feet from. Uh, and, and, three, and, the door, and the door is going to gonna stop it, so it's going to fly well, 60 it, feet. So it's 3d6 times 6. No, it's times 10. 10 feet away. No, it's for every, for every 10 feet. So for every 10 feet it flies, you roll the 3d6 that many times. So Who does? So hit I, me or you? Uh, I'll roll it. Uh... I have to roll this six times. So, okay. So. 
so far, for the first three rolls that I did, he's already taking 37 damage. Okay. All right, the next three rolls. Jesus. It takes it seventy-one damage. <coughs> is it dead yet? <coughs> nope. <laughs> oh How much God. damage do you guys think we've done to this thing? Over three hundred by by a lot. Oh, okay. Mm, no. No. You you have not done three hundred damage to it. Uh, what what do you think it like? Almost one fifty, almost two. Chris is closer, yeah. Okay. Fucking legendary monster. I got to let it go one more round. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, I, I, I have something up my sleeve, but I. I oh, I, I, I know it. It needs to be timed just right. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I might know what you're talking about. But then again, I might not. Um. <laughs> So who yeah, knows? Who, who, who? It is its turn. That um, was its turn? Yeah, it is. Well, it had, it, had to, door, and it, it had to do all that shit to get out of it. <laughs> it busts the door open. And you can get a glimpse of uh, quite a bit of treasure on the other side. So does it even recover? Or now it's basically it's up for grabs? Uh, nice. Udadek, it's your turn. It is currently 60 feet away from you. It's blocking the door? Yes. Uh, what is it? Uh, hmm, 60 feet. I can't reach it. I'm going to cast Command at first level. What's the range on that? 60 feet. Fair enough. Uh, what are you commanding it to do? Grovel. It's already prone. Oh, is that prone? Um. Okay, then now I don't need to cast that then if it's already prone. Oh, let's see. Can't reach it. Oh wait, um, spiritual weapon. There you go. Uh, what do it, does your spiritual weapon look like? Um, a giant hailbird. A giant hailbird. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm gonna level, make. What level are you casting it at? First level. Spiritual weapon is no. The first level. Spirit. Sorry, se second level. Okay. Uh, that's with a bonus action, and you make it appear above it, and yeah. it is a plus nine to hit, uh, but it has this advantage one. because it's prone. Okay. Huh. I rolled the same number both times. For inspiration. He's already used have bardic inspiration already. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did use it. That is a um, 19. Yeah, that doesn't hit. Ah. Uh. So, but your spiritual weapon is still there, and you can, as as a bonus action, uh, have it attack. Uh, he, he summoned it. I summoned it. That's a bonus action. Summon it. I'm just saying, like, in, in your turns from here on, your spiritual weapon is still there. It doesn't go away. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh. And I'm gonna. gonna I'm gonna move moves. thirty feet. I'm gonna, no. I'm gonna dash and move uh, fifty feet towards it. Fifty, oh, 50 feet, feet towards it. Okay. So you dash. So you use your action to dash uh, fifty feet towards it, and that is the end of your turn, Connor. Ah, uh, well, that's not exactly what I thought it would be. Um, so, oh, shit. 
I'm tempted to look at your character sheet to see what you're thinking of, but I'm Don't not going to. Fucking do it. I'm Don't not, you I'm not dare going to. Do it. I'm so tempted though, because I want <laughs> to like, know. He's like, "Don't you fucking dare." I want to know. Uh I'm just going to stay there and I'm going to hit it with another vicious mockery. <laughs> I'm just going to Look, that's why your dumbass fell through the fucking door, you stupid shit. And now you've made it easier for us to actually get inside your treasure that you're trying to hide. Wow, you are terrible at your freaking job. You're making it depressed. <laughs> <laughs> Is it hand. still prone? Is this still thing still prone? Yeah, it hasn't come back to its turn for it to stand up yet. Uh... This thing is fucked. <laughs> 11 psychic damage. Okay. It, it is, it is <laughs> really taking to heart uh, what you're saying. Okay. But at the same time, I don't. So, I'm going to... It's my turn, right? Yes, sir. Chain lightning, 8th level. Oh, fuck. <laughs> wow. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, Call Lightning would have been a better one if you had that, but Chain Lightning no. is going to be pretty fucking dangerous. Yeah, because I'm right there. Fuck. Well, it I, only... I, 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 I would have cast a late action fireball, but that would have been thrown back at you. I this can't. Chain Lightning, it, it works similar to how um, Chromatic uh, Orb does. Or you choose uh, to hit others around. Oh, okay. Alright, hold on, hold on. All right. Can I reflect it back through his weapon onto him again? Uh, that's... That's something that I don't think anyone's ever done in-game, because technically you shouldn't be allowed to. I, I don't think weapons actually have any uh, HP or something. But I, then again, I don't know. I'm not the DM of because that's what I'll do if I can do that. I'll reflect well, it. I'll hit him in. Well, also, I don't think because, you're, if you because hit... your whirlwind is up, you can... It, it's still up. You can move the whirlwind to it and suck it up in the whirlwind again. All right. Can I, that's an, you, is that... Because if you... Um, I mean, that's concentration, but you can also still do chain lightning. Uh, but you can't chain lightning and move the whirlwind in the same turn. Um, so it's up to you. I'd rather do the chain lightning right now. I'll move the will win next turn. Okay, so it makes a, a deck is save it, is, at disadvantage. Does anybody else get put in the, into the whirlwind, or just who he targets? Whoever he targets. Can okay. I? Can I? Now, can I? Like I said, can I channel this uh, chain lightning into the weapon and back at it again? Um. If you hit the weapon, you're, you're gonna hit me. Well, no, he ha he can target. You're not close so he yet. Can he, can, you're not he can have two targets. I can shoot. Um, so I see what you're trying to. I see what you're trying to do. Um, all right. Um, so I'm gonna have him make a deck saving throw. The weapon can't make a deck saving throw, but for you, I'll have you make an intelligence roll to see whatever the number, whatever. I mean, I like the creativity, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to allow the possibility of it. Um, so just give me a roll uh, on your 20. Don't tell me the number yet. Let me do his deck save first. Yeah, uh, that's... Oh, he has to do it at a disadvantage. Yeah, it's a 1. You know what? Uh, what roll, What did you roll on the 20? 18, and that's yeah. not with my modifiers. <laughs> so, yeah, 22 would hit his AC exactly. Yeah, fuck it. Uh... Roll 20d8. Yeah! 20d8? Because the chain lightning does 10d8, but he can target two things. So what he's doing is charging the mall with electricity in order to reflect it into him. And I like the creativity, so I'm allowing this. Uh, also, it's really fucking cool, so do it. <laughs> it kind of is. All right. All right. So first one was uh, first four, 16. The second four are 22. The second four, the next four are 13. And the last four is a 16. That's 20... D8? Yeah. 
Uh, by my count, that's only 16. Oh, yeah, you're right. One more. Uh, then it's 21. Okay. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. A lot Unlimited of damage. power! <laughs> <laughs> Once more, the Sith will rule the galaxy. So he hit he hit the statue, hit the weapon, and then hit the statue again. Yes. That is. A I'm taking of, of 88 damage. He hit my weapon that, that was just floating there. No, the spiritual weapon doesn't take damage. Uh He hit the weapon that he hit the weapon that the that uh, the Empyrean is wielding, the Maul. Oh. That's why I said about the creativity. I, I liked it, so rule of that cool, I'm, I'm like, I'm cool with it. That, that it, is a really inventive idea. It is hurting bad. <laughs> After it took this uh, barrage of, of just electrical energy, um, it is uh, is not having fun. Well, since I used that action, that beats a sweater on my on the side of my head right now. Ooh, man, I used a lot of action. Who <laughs> you, you telling? I'm I'm with a slot. Uh, Give me a long okay. rest of this. <laughs> it is the Empyrean's turn, and it stands up. It is no longer prone. Okay. Um. Wait, you're ten feet away from it. Yeah. You get an opportunity attack. You can keep it on the ground. Ha! Let's see. Yeah, that's 22. Son of a bitch. It takes nine In damage. In cap. Um, it's still on the ground, but it's going to attempt to uh, use its bolt. Uh, spell. Actually, no, it no, it is not. Uh, it's gonna cast earthquake. Uh, I'm gonna counter spell it. Uh, <laughs> I was about to say, if you're not counter spelling it, it's happening. I'm just saying. <laughs> let me just double check. Um, let me just double check what uh, level spell earthquake is. Oh, fair enough. We are not. We are. We are not letting this thing get up. We are beating it. <laughs> you know what? This is a good party. This is some fun shit. We're like the. We're like a the wizard, literally... a paladin, and a bard. We can. We can do some damage. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like the beginning of a fucking joke too. A wizard, paladin, <laughs> and a bard. too far. <laughs> Fuck it up. <laughs> but you know what's. You know what's awesome about this team is. We are three of, I would say, the five essentials for any great adventuring group. All we need is a rogue and a cleric. Be, yeah, I would say uh, a cleric. Yeah, it'd be kind of nice. Um, I don't have any heal spells, though. So you're casting uh, Counterspell at third level? Yeah. I need you to roll. Uh, I, I, D20. I could do it at a different level. It's an eighth level spell. That's why I just said you might as well just take the take the role. My suggestion, because I want to see your plan. <laughs> DM use a suggestion. <laughs> it was successful. Uh, am I adding anything to it? Your spell attack modifier. Spell attack modifier. Uh, you know, I don't think I ever actually looked to see what that would be. Uh, if you look in your spells, it should say right on the top. Yeah, it should say at the very bottom, very top there. Like mine's always plus nine. Oh, okay. Um, that is a total of twelve. Yeah, it's not gonna do it. I rolled the wrong d twenty. Um, everybody takes fifty damage. Ooh. Off back. We don't need to roll. We don't need to roll for wait, it. Wait. Wait, wait, do I take 50 damage? Way, 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 way in the back? I'm almost 120 it's, feet back it's there, five, It's a 500-foot range spell. God damn it. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. How much damage am I taking? Uh, 50. 
Let me, uh, let me double, let me double, double check to see if you guys have to uh, make a save. Um. Yeah, it's it is. You don't save against it unless you're concentrating on a spell, uh, which uh, Sarion, you are. I am. I am um, too. Oh yeah, so both of you roll concentration checks. You guys have to be the twenty-five. So it's a D twenty, right? Yes. D twenty Constitution saving throw. Bane, Bane fell. Oh, it's a Constitution. Yep. Let me see what that said. Constitution saving throw. Where's Khan? I don't even see Khan up here. Oh, uh, you have a plus one. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna beat that shit. <laughs> so your whirlwind, <laughs> your whirlwind fades. Um, oh, Bane fades. And Bane fades. Oh, it should have taken uh, Bane when it went to go and cast a uh, spell, though. It's it just it's a. Uh... It's not a spell attack, it just happens. It's casting time one action. There's no there's no roll for it or anything. Alright. <laughs> Fuck it, but alright. I'm I'm, 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 looking, I'm looking directly at the spell and there's no roll for it. That's fine. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. My knees! And so yeah, out. everybody takes fifty. Uh the professor is down. Is he dead? No, he's down? just unconscious. Okay. My knees. But he's going to start taking death saving throws. Ah. Oh. Um, okay, so... Um, and that's the end of its turn. It is still prone. Ooh, it's a deck. Is somebody going to take care of the uh, professor? I mean, I can, but I, I kind of need to concentrate on this big bitch. Alright, I got him. I'm going to move. How far is the professor from me? Uh... The professor? 63. Yeah, he's 63. Yeah. Jesus Christ. God damn it. You, you need to just focus oh, on no. him down. Uh, uh, can, did anybody can get him? Or do you have to heal him? Uh, you have to heal him. All right, or I don't have to heal. you stabilize him by using, uh, using a survival check. I have, I have spare the dying. All he has to do is survive one effing round. All right, then I'm going to attack the... Uh, Construct. Okay. And use my great weapon fighting. Oh. You have that is a. Uh... Oh. Huh. Wait, wait, do I have it? Have what? Hold on. Where is great weapon master? Do I have great weapon fighting? You have great weapon master also. So it just takes the negative five. Yeah. No, I thought I, I thought I, I thought I had the one where, where if I roll a nineteen or twenty, I crit. Oh, that's I don't. that's a that's a champion fighter. Yeah. Um. So I roll a nineteen plus four is twenty three, so I hit. Okie dokie. D ten. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, and I'm a bonus action. Um, staggering, uh, not staggering. Should I do staggering? Uh, yeah, staggering smite. Okay, what's the save you estimate? Fourth level, it is a wisdom save. Uh, he makes the save. 18. Okay. But he's, he's still taking full damage, though. Yeah. That is... 9 plus 14... 23 and it's 46 uh, 13 and 4 17 plus 1d8 radiant damage 6 so 36 damage Hurting. Oh, I'm attack again. I get advantage. 
Uh, 26. Yep, that hits. D10 plus 4. 9 damage. Shut the fuck up. He's still up. He has no hit point, doesn't he? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Connor. Um, Connor is going to, uh, look at the Empyrean and say, you know the difference between you and me is you're ugly as hell and I'm stunning. And I'm going to cast stunning, uh, a uh, power word stun on him. It's instantaneous. <laughs> there is no, uh, um, there is no save. He is stunned. He can't do anything. I don't know what the effect for stun is, but basically he is now stunned in his place. And then uh, bonus action, I'm going to misty step over to the professor. Okay. Um, yeah, he's stunned. He can't do anything. Uh, sorry, on. All right. Uh, since he has no saving throws now. It's my last second level. Yeah, oh, I'm going to do stun, it. Stun, essentially, he, he can't even make saving throws. I'm just going to hit him with a ray of frost. Keep my he Just can't trip him. Uh, you're a hundred and something feet away. You are not close enough for Ray of Frost. All right, so what do I? Hit? Wait, I do got one thing. I can I can help with Fireball at a third level. First, you have to you have to stand up for being prone. Which you uh, okay, move, yeah, but you're not gonna move anyway. So yep, I do that, and then I hit him with a Fireball. Your last third level spell. My last third level spell. All right. Um, it doesn't make a saving throw. And go ahead and call it. <laughs> call my number. No, oh, that, dead? This, that means that means that means. Tell me exactly how how uh, how this thing dies. It, give me this. Give me this picture. Uh, paint all this right, picture well, of how you how you destroy it. Man, I just I just stand the hell up, and I'm like, all right, I'm done with this bitch. And I just cast my fireballs and hit it with one fireball to take off one arm, one fireball to take off the other arm, and the last fireball takes off its head. So as the as Sarion stands up, just just quick motions, uh, left arm explodes, right arm explodes, and as it's trying to lean its head up to get up, it goes directly in the face, and it seems like it absorbs it, and then you see slowly as it just turns more orange, just getting brighter and hotter, and then just head explodes and it just collapses to the ground. You guys hmm. have defeated an Empyrean. Hmm. But I was fucked up. All right, I need a break. It was at one <laughs> HP, wasn't it? Um, was it? Was it at one HP after I was done? Yes. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about actual break. I'm talking about my guy needs a fucking break. <laughs> right after he, we we kill it and all that head exploding, I'm gonna put my hand onto the professor's chest and I'm gonna say, "We're not done with you yet." And cast spirit dying. He he coughed. <laughs> How are you feeling? I I uh I don't ever want to want to do something like this again, old boy. <laughs> well, we did warn you. I think my adventuring days are done. Did he like the fun and games? You might want to rethink your adventuring and, and hire a bigger party for the next time, but uh, you know. Or just send people out to do the adventuring for you, since it seems more your speed. My friends are dead. Well, once again, we did warn you. So, <clears throat> well, um, Big Blue over there actually uh, did part of our job for us. Um, chamber's open. And uh, all we got to do is move its dead bloody corpse, which shouldn't be too hard for our massive friend over here with the uh, armor. What are you talking about? Massive friend with the armor? The oh, lizard. him. Oh. Our scaly friend. Fuck. <laughs> 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 can I loot this thing? As you're about to move I'll, I'll... its body, it, uh, it just melts into the ground. By the way, does it, do, it, point does out... it do anything to the ground? Um. No, it it just kind of just forms into the ground. All right. 
I don't like that. I, <laughs> I don't like that one bit. That's a that's some T two bill bullshit. Fuck that. Hey, hey, can I take can I take any of this like goo before it's gone? Um, by the time you get there, it's already gone. Your obsession. And... Your obsession with study might be your downfall one of these days. <laughs> Anyways, shall we? Well, should we rest first? Because uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm kind of hurting. I mean, we can. Uh, fine, we can do a short rest here. I suppose. Um, I kind of want a long rest. Yeah, I need a long rest. During this time, uh, you guys are allowed a long rest. Thank, Woo! thank the gods. Are you sure, we do long. Okay. Right. Hey, Wizard Tower. Poof. Yeah, he has his. You both have magnificent mansions that you can easily have that working. You know what? I'm I'm gonna go ahead and say that instead of his wizard's tower, I actually poof my own damn tower. Uh, uh my own my own mansion. I'm just like uh I'm just go into what I'm more familiar with. Um, if anyone wants to experience the lap of luxury, join me in my mansion. <laughs> I think he means his penis. No, <laughs> not this time. <laughs> Although, <laughs> it does come in handy when I'm on the road and I need a place to stay and uh, maybe I meet a fair young lady who also wants to get out of the rain. Poor man! Uh, that, yeah, too. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm not interested <laughs> I'll, I'll in any of you. Hopefully he doesn't have anything for lizards. I No, it, I've banged many lizards. I But I don't want anything to do... I, I don't dip my pen... In the company, I don't dip my quill in the company ink. Well, that's it's as simple as that. Company ink? Who works for you? We were hired by the professor. Oh, that's what you mean. Speaking of which, he never said how much he was going to pay us. Well, he's going to pay us a lofty sum. We damn near died. I, I, I think, I think we're going to take this whole sum. Yeah, but anyways, I'll be in my mansion. It's this door over here. I'll, inside. I'll take a risk on the wild on the wild side, and I'll join him in his mansion. Inside is just butt sex, gorgeous. Butt sex everywhere. Well, funny, funny enough, it, it will look reminiscent of like a, a, a Roman palace. So you kind of get the idea that maybe I've hosted one or two orgies in this thing. <laughs> And Why is your floor so sticky? It has a, a bit of the smell of uh, sex in the air. I'm like, oh, yeah, I forgot these oh, things that... the air out that much. Mm, this is strong on the nose. He has, get, he has a sensitive <laughs> smell, too, because he's a lizard. Cast prestidigitation and make it smell like freshly cleaned floors. Like that, that's what I'd be casting right about now. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, I sometimes forget to air it out. <sighs> <laughs> Twenty years of sex all up in this <laughs> Twenty years. <laughs> Twenty years. That's how much that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's how long I have been not airing this out. I'm just saying that's kind of the distinction you got. Like, oh. I was gonna say 20 years, there's gotta be some mold growing somewhere. <laughs> just magic it away. Is there such thing as a semen mold? Is that the best fist in the ceiling right there? What the fuck? Everything's all hard and like break can break off easily from, from all the sticky semen. Of <laughs> any form to it anymore. It's <laughs> one giant breakable. There is, <laughs> I just picture like because of the, you just said that, I pictured like this sculpture made and I'm like, oh that's a nice sculpture, and it's like all semen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking my long rest. Screw you guys. It, it used uh, to be white. <laughs> Go. Uh, uh, he he goes and he uh, he has his various uh, fruit bowls and all kinds of other foods, and then he takes his long rest as well. Yep. Well, as you all take your long rest, you are uh, afterwards exiting the mansion. You periodically transport the treasure back up to the carts 
and that is where we're going to be ending this one shot. It is very Woo! fun, very fantastic. I um, actually yes. We only had one combat because we dodged the other one. Yeah, it was you, amazing. You guys dodged the other one. I was gonna have like, like you guys fight a bunch of gnolls to like you know, dust it off, but then it's just like. A freaking god over here just like I am an all powerful terrible god leave and then just like fuck that there's a bunch <laughs> of dogs man I, I actually want to play Connor again in, a, in another campaign at some point I kind of want to play the uh, Utadik in another campaign too uh, I, I love this guy this guy was fun <laughs> maybe we'll return to the setting in a sequel to this one shot eventually you know, you know how many sequel one shots we have already we have a lot <laughs> Because they're just so good, we can't help it. That's true. Uh, I do. Uh, part two um, that was supposed to happen this past Saturday will be coming up uh, this coming Saturday due to the uh, unfortunate uh, situation where one of our special guests couldn't make it, uh, which was also beneficial because one of our other players wasn't going to be able to make it to that particular one. So the actual part two, hopefully, hopefully, will be taking place this coming Saturday. Um, other than that, of course, the adventure and Guardian story will continue tomorrow. And I think everyone is going to enjoy that one. Come watch Alala be a dum dum. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, uh, we all love doing this. And it was great to have you, Schaefer, all the way from Korea. Hey, it was fun. It was great. All the way from tomorrow. <laughs> um, and eventually, maybe we'll return to this again and possibly could have others join us as well everybody join the the party of connor utadek and sarion in another adventure that they may go on who knows all i know is um if you want to see that for sure faster i have a little little challenge to present to our viewers um if we can get to 50 followers, which right now we have 33. If we can get to 50 followers, then I promise for sure we will do a sequel to this one shot. And I will try to get every, all of the Smoking Dragons a part of it to make it a grand spectacle. So, uh, like, share, subscribe. Well, we can't subscribe. Follow. Um... Try to get us to 50 followers, then you can see more great content from us. Tell your friends and family. Yeah, let everybody know. Let everybody share. It's fun stuff. We're we still in hot D and D water over here. We just wanna, <laughs> we just want to have uh, fun and uh, share our games with as many people as possible. We just like having fun. So. Oh yeah. Um. Definite one of my one of the highlights of this stream, uh, combat wise, was the the chain lightning reflect. Uh, that was uh, that was very creative. I I always award massive creativity. Yeah, uh, that yep. So, until then, guys, we've been the Smoking Dragons, where we aren't your average dungeon crawlers, and we'll see you tomorrow for Adventures in Guardia. Have a good night, guys. Later.